Hi, I'm Peachy. Hello, I'm Patrick. And I'm also Jeff. But I will change in a minute or two. He's running late. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Sweet. Smooth. No one noticed. No one no one will notice. <laughs> Today we are joined by a very special guest. John Ashton. John, thank you, thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for I know me. John from working at Games Workshop. But for those of you out there who won't know who John is, John, could you explain to the wider community who you are and what do you do? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so, yes, my name's John. I've uh, run a blog for about 10 years that's on a little bit of a hiatus at the moment uh, called heresyandheroes.com. Uh, for your old uh, title, didn't it? It was, indeed. Um, uh, I've also uh, there's uh, done three seasons, well, two and a half seasons of my podcast, My Life in Miniatures, which is sort of like Desert Island Disc, and I've, I've had... Someone in this room, I've had... Oh, it was you, wasn't it? Oh, you were on that it, yeah. Bed, yeah, you've had him <laughs> Yes, yes. And, um, and I was also um, Warhammer Community's first commissioning editor. Mm. So, Explain, because yeah. a lot of people... I, I know what that means. Yeah. Pat now knows what that means. Yes. Well, well but still, you know, clarification. Yes. Yeah, no, <laughs> what, what is fine. a commissioning editor? What, 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 what does well, that entail? You, you're asking two questions there, because... Um, <laughs> Uh, being a commissioning editor for Warhammer Community is actually quite different from being a commissioning editor at a publishing house or mm. a newspaper or something. So um, I remember talking to uh, the commissioning editor of Black Library and he was like, our jobs are very different. <laughs> and I was like, yes, they are. Because for, for him, he's you know, he will commission writers to write pieces and he'll edit the work with them and pass it on to senior editors later on. For me, uh, my job was effectively just work with everyone who didn't work for Warhammer Community. So that was both internally, so people in, whether it's Forge World or the Miniature Studio or whoever around the business, uh, and but externally. So mm. all of the um, influencers, a word that I absolutely hate, but um, it's, cool. it, it exists. <laughs> um, so all the influencers, but also just people, my favourite thing about the job was people who had created mad armies yeah. um, that they put all their time and effort into and we wanted to show it off and uh, those were my best days when I could get their models yeah. Yeah, used to some, well it still is but uh, it was always nice seeing all that stuff on the community website I also yeah. think we found the title for the uh, the thumbnail by the way John H John hates influencers <laughs> and just leave it at that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just, do you know what it's because that is one of those horrible insider terms that happen when because uh, I've, I've worked in digital marketing for a long time and uh, it, when it first started it's one of those words that's actually quite dehumanising it's like mm. I'm describing you entirely by your function mm. to me which is you influence people to buy my stuff um, I've never liked using that because uh, and especially in the context of Games Workshop miniatures are going to sell themselves anyway mm. you, this is more while it is a promotion it is definitely part of advertising it's more a sort of partnership that you're doing with someone like you know we've made this thing we think it's cool we want you to have it and if you think it's cool do something about it and equally if you don't think it's cool tell people about that as well and yeah. it was it was and yes all right technically that's what an influencer does but it's just a nicer way to yeah, yeah. phrase it yeah. partner because they always say like paid partnerships yes. and stuff like that yeah, so that's, true. that's yeah. where that comes from yeah, yeah. they're both both parties are receiving yeah. something in return. Someone's getting free models, someone's exactly. getting exposure. Yeah. yeah, like influence was a term that came out of when you're in a big meeting to do like a big Christmas campaign at an advertising agency or something, and you had five minutes to do your 10 slides and you had just needed a word that describes all the people you're going to send a product to and it, mm. they say wonderful things about it. And they say you just came up with influencer based on what they do, yeah. not who they are. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I quite like, I think we we had um, uh, Eric of Eric's Hobby Workshop. Oh, yes. And yeah. he said he likes creator. Yeah, creator's uh, great, yeah. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to content creator, because he's yeah. like, I'm not just a yeah, content yeah. machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, You were doing that before like content existed. You were yeah. just making mm. stuff. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I mean, if you, if you want content on the internet, that, have you ever heard of the, the legend of the Mechanical Turk? You ever heard that? No. no. So this was... Um, this is why we've got John on, by the way. Right. He's got such knowledge. I love well, it. thank you. <laughs> um, so this is the thing. It was centuries and centuries ago. I forget the exact dates, but it was this machine that went all around Europe, and it was this chess-playing machine, right? And it was automatic. It was sort of like the first robot, if you oh. like. Oh. And it was a chessboard, mm. and you would go up and play the great grandmasters in, in Russia and Italy and Spain and wherever, and it would always win. And it was supposed to be this brilliant thinking engine inside it. What it actually was, was inside it was a man who <laughs> yeah. could see up through the holes and be like, right, that's moved there. So then he's got a little thing, right, okay, okay, I'll move my bit from there to there. And it would, and he was pretty much a grandmaster himself. And content, a lot of content on the internet these days is created by things called Mechanical Turks, which are you um, pay 
almost nothing to an enormous group of people who will you know do one task for 10 pence and mm. they will generate your content for you so yeah get content out there have creator creator yeah. is a much yeah. nicer word yeah, yeah. Mm. No, i like that yeah, yeah. creator mm. so um would i be right in thinking that the whole influencer creator mm. uh, program was your baby to start off because there was nothing like it before well like no i remember I, yeah the, it, it, not really the, i inherited a spreadsheet with a few names on it cool. um that i used to send some some mm. stuff to and it was the big people like bell of lost souls and mini war gaming and things like that and the obvious ones and then over my three and a bit years there grew that list quite exponentially um to kind of bring in new people because a lot of things were sort of it starts off as just blogs a lot yeah. of it was just blogs um and with a few youtube channels and then obviously youtube came along and i remember when we got our first tiktoker and yeah. someone got in touch say hi i've got a hobby tiktok can i can i get some free stuff and it's like how many views do you get and he said some enormous number and i was like oh yeah fine okay, yeah. <laughs> here's your nda sign that <laughs> get on board um but yeah so it, was, it, was a, it became a big list of wonderful people and um yeah, and, you know, everyone from Golden Dean winning painters, who we'd send all the really nice kits to, mm. to... Um, yeah, like Richard Gray and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. so all, all of those guys, that was that was great. And, um, yeah, and I, there's actually, that's a myth I could address for you. Mm. When a lot of things get released now, um, there's there a, seems to be a limited supply at GW. And uh, if you've missed out on getting it, obviously it's terrible. If you've gone through a process, I want to buy this thing, and you get told it's out of stock yeah. minutes later, it could be very easy to sort of say, oh, look at an influencer who's put their stuff up and be like, oh, I wish I could have gotten one, but mm. I didn't get it. And I absolutely understand that reaction, but I can tell you that's not true. That's mm. it's the influencers. I used to go to a meeting about six to nine months before things were released. And I'd be shown what was coming out in six nine months. And I'd have to create a spreadsheet or update a spreadsheet actually with how many we as a marketing team would need. So yeah. uh, that would include the stuff we need for TV, yeah. stuff you, the painters would need uh, if we were doing any competitions, um, the stuff the writers would need and everything we were sending out as well. So say we needed, um, the one I always think of was the Ossie Art Bone Reapers when they came out. Yeah. So I know we send, 40 battle tomes out so all right here you go we'll send all of those out and we'll need 10 for ourselves so i'll write on the spreadsheet 50. anything above 50 we would they had six to nine months sometimes actually with really big releases a year to create the added stock that they would need yeah. for us so if it was a big release and especially big boxes of like 40k when that came out we'd want hundreds of them yeah um for all sorts of reasons um, but yeah, they would have known about a year in advance and would have created the that entrance. supply yeah. for us. So yeah. It would never ever have affected. Um, I mean, it kind of reminds yeah. me a bit of like the sample system that we used to have internally anyway, which was like if I needed plastics for warmer TV hmm. um, that weren't even made and weren't even boxes at that point, I'd have to go through this intranet form, yes. fill it all out with hmm. miniatures, detailing what it is I need, and then sometimes they didn't even name it. Like, what is the name of the product? I was like, oh, it's Orc Spiky Thing. That's what everyone's calling it right now. I don't actually know its official product name, but it's known as Orc Spiky Thing. They know that that's called Orc Spiky Thing because that's the placeholder name as well. So it's yeah. always a bit like, I yeah. hope this is the right name. Mm. Um, you detail me sprues you need, what it's for, when you need it for. And they always used to get tam uh, sample test shots. And usually for Wama TV, you're okay. Mm. Like for the packaging painters, they needed to be Bob on because it's Absolutely. what's in the packaging. For Wama TV, if it was a bit like, the spear tip hasn't fully formed on this one guy. I won't build that guy then. Yeah. I'll just build that guy instead with that weapon option. Oh, okay, then that's fine. We can send you this set of test shots out. Um, so you'd always get the test shots, which is just like being done in the background in, in the factory. But yeah, I know there's been a lot of noise with like Leviathan, the Lion, Sanguinius, mm. where people are going, oh, the reason I can't get stock is because the influence has got them all and they're saying like, oh, look how cool this product is and this, that and the other. But obviously, yeah. Which is obviously really galling if you've, you've been waiting yeah. for that for months yeah. and you can't get it on the day because that's what you I, want. Yeah, like I say, I saw a lot of that around, like certainly this year mm. um, with the Kill Team boxes that just went out of stock immediately 
and the lion and oh yeah the lion was a big one yeah. um and th- like the lion especially because it was like a new primark and everybody was posting up their yeah pictures and you're like well i can't even buy it and then i know someone's got it like they're posting it a week early and they must have had it like weeks previous and you're like oh yeah and i guess it presents like i'm not saying i agree like i can understand the link mm, yeah. um, oh of course yeah but i i think it's like the frustration should be at games workshop not like yeah. an individual yeah. who's Creators. like i like yeah. i like painting yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and it's 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 it is a frustration, but and what I'd also say is there's no one at Games Workshop who's really to blame, and certainly in a malicious way. It's no. literally a case of we think like because yeah. that how do you how do you judge how popular something is? But I mean, you say, well, we've got this being mentioned nine thousand times on Twitter. Should we make nine thousand of them, or do we make ninety thousand of them, mm-hmm. or do we make how many do we make? And so it's quite a tricky process mm. to get it right. And what you don't want to do, which actually happened with. Um, a game long before I started that I've heard of, uh, which was, um, it was when uh, Space Hulk was re-released after the re-release. So they did, they did oh, that yes. box again. Yeah, but they did yeah. so many, they just they wasn't, they didn't, yeah, didn't yeah. sell them. Yeah, I, I, That's a nightmare for a business because you've just got it all taking up space in your way. All the stock and everything, yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. can't build more of your new stuff because you've got a load of old stuff sitting there and taking out the space for it. Yeah, because the first time it came out, it was a big deal, and yeah. some of it got leaked and stuff, and, yeah. uh, like minor leaks and whatever. Mm. Um, but that did really well, and obviously I think later on it was like, that did really well, Let's uh, didn't, didn't they do like some extra bits in it? Like it was like an extra set of, like, like some extra tiles maybe, or like some extra rules, yeah. just to make it feel like, it's not like a reprint, it's an up, date because you can't reprint something that's limited yes that um, might be right yeah i'll, so I'll think, take your word for yeah, it so yeah so i think there was something in it that was extra on top of what the previous one had to make it unique to the previous mm. one um but i always remember that that era because space Hulk did really well they made dreadfully dreadfully mm. um was an awesome game um oh that'll be jeff i'd be like i'll cut to me and be like you oh i, I feel a bit strange <laughs> Oh, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, you're welcome. Literally, that was magic. <laughs> <laughs> Editing TV style. Uh, yeah, so Dreadfully uh, came around because obviously mm. the success for, of Space Hulk was yeah. doing really well. Dreadfully came around. I I really liked the game. It was a really good Loved game it. system. Uh, Phil Kelly did a great job writing that all up. Brilliant. And and, well, and also, it's just a love letter to John Blanche's artwork as well, isn't it? There's it's, so much love poured into that project. Yeah. Um, the problem I think they had with it because the, the, there's this whole claim that Dreadfleet didn't do so well. Mm. Um, the numbers did very well. They did. But when you when you look at like the numbers in comparison to like other stuff that was being released at the time, it did in, it did incredibly well. In comparison to Space Hulk, mm. it didn't do very well. No. What's the reason for that? Space Hulk. Everyone knows what Space Hulk is, right? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's heard of that for years. Dreadfully, if it was na- labelled maybe Man of War, yeah. might have done a bit better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why didn't they do that? I don't know. I think don't they know. wanted to try a different angle and stuff yeah. because Man of War is like naval battles on the high seas, right? And mm. you have different factions, whereas this was more of a story between two captains with their own like ad hoc fleets. And yeah. it was, I, I hope there would be more, and there might have been more if it was more of a success for Games yeah. Workshop. But. I just think it was just a weird sort of situation. If they'd named it Man of War, they probably would have been more interest, which meant there would have been more games with more like fleets coming out and this, that and the other. Yeah. But um, there, there was this horrible, we all got pulled into a meeting. Yeah. Um, and this is like management 101, not what to do to, in, to build morale <laughs> in the team. This, this is what you don't do when you've spent hours and years, well, probably like 18 months building a project. What you, the amount of time I've known you, this could be part seven of 180 <laughs> 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 what, you, what you don't do is you pull everyone into a big meeting as the uh, studio manager and then show, say, this hasn't done very well. It's, 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 there's so much stock left over. Here's a video of all that stock being crushed. Imagine <laughs> the games writer who made that project, the artist, and all the other people that put love into this project watching that happen on video. And it's like, mm. you don't get how people work, do you? No. <laughs> no. A special sort of twisted to do that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, after that, yeah, everyone's just like, that was hard. Did you see? Yeah, that was horrible. Why would they do that? Mm. That's just crushing, literally crushing to someone's you know, soul. As opposed oh to the God. idea of maybe let's sell it at a discount, see if we can get more oh, people never trust no. yeah. And now they don't, and this yeah. is the thing, isn't it? You go, but you go, Reduce the price, see if you can get more people interested, you know, yeah. and then carry on with it. So I do get that, and it's, it sounds so wasteful, but I understand it from a, a business point of view that 
it's easy to crush stock yeah. to get someone to open everything up and then distribute yeah. the stuff back out into the warehouse. That costs a lot of money in yeah. time and manpower, yeah. whereas it doesn't cost much if you just crush it all down. But the recycling side of it is just god-awful. Yeah. Um, I mean, very, you could just yeah. employ someone to go, cardboard, plastic, cardboard, plastic, cardboard, plastic. That might be yeah. less than, like, cardboard goes over here, plastic sprue one goes over here. That, mm. That's obviously a bit more time-intensive, but yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's very tricky to do that. And I mean, I remember when, um, when I was leaving, and actually we were sort of moving off this and I had to clear out do you, do you remember I had the vault which was uh, my locked cupboard oh, yes, with yeah. all the unreleased stuff yeah, in it yeah. and people had to come up and sign out books that weren't released yet um, from me and um, now, yeah. when so it had been COVID obviously and we'd come back and told to clear everything out and I had loads of stuff in the vault and there was a big bin and it was like yeah it goes in the bin and like or it, or it could go back to my place. <laughs> just, just that, that really expensive Necromunda um, kit, yeah. you know, the £180 mega box. What if it, you know, what, what if it just came back with me? It would yeah. be fine, right? It would be, yeah. Because otherwise it would have just gone and gotten yeah. smushed. Yeah. Yeah. We used yeah. to have a recycling bin. Do you remember that? It used to be like oh, the yeah, hyenas would Yeah, the bin it. divers. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember yeah, that. Yeah. So um, there was one time I had a bit of a clear out because we are moving from downstairs to upstairs. Mm. Um, and... Uh, I was just like tying it all up. There was like so much stuff that we weren't going to use, like German copies of like Indomitus and like mm. Age of Sigma Dominion stuff like that. Because so, we needed oh, the models. I used to trip over those boxes on the way to the toilet. You did, mm. yes. I've ever been quite a pile. So I was like breaking them all down. There's all this random stuff. Like we had like so many random boxes of Orc Boys because I think there'd been a shop clearance and a load of it gone to the warehouse. At this point, they did have someone that would go recycling bin plastic bin recycling mm -hmm. bin plastic bin like that um, and he'd contacted the studio to go do you guys need anything before we like recycle all this stuff so we went through like and our mm -hmm. boss was like if you can find stuff that's a collection for the army painters for Warmer TV that'd be good mm -hmm. you can like, find some stuff that you might use for like videos so we went through that didn't use most of it for a year no. so we recycled it and what I was doing was like I could just like break this all down or pass it to that guy who's definitely going to paint it. Yeah. So I'll pass yeah. that box to that guy who's going to paint it. I was like, Do you want, are you interested? He was like, yeah, I'll paint that. Mm. And I got stopped by uh, the manager at the time. He was like, you can't just be giving stock away. You need to recycle. I was like, all I'm doing is wasting my time opening all these boxes, mm. pouring it all in there for them to get it all out again. Yeah. Can I yeah. not just give them the box? Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, no. So everyone was just like waiting for it to empty all these boxes, yeah. put the box in one bin, put the rule book in it or the instruction book and then put the sprues in there and then go, thank you. Like, just name it as you're putting it in. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was like, I'm wasting my time doing this. I could just literally give them the box. <laughs> You'd have times where either you guys emptying the painting cupboard or me emptying the vault and or stuff we'd had around kicking around for ages. And you'd just pick it up and you'd be walking towards those recycling bins and someone would just be like, what you got? Yeah. Yeah. Like, things are getting off. Do you want there. this? Like, yeah, yeah, I'll have that. Like, All right, fine. Don't have to go to the bin, do I? I mean, mm. I've, I've got some sprues down there. I've got loads of Death Guard. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. That, uh, that are like tucked behind a guitar. Um, I remember, I think the busiest I ever saw the bin was, um, oh, Curse City. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah because yeah. nobody could get anything. And everyone was like, oh, I really want some more zombies or skeletons mm. or whatever. Or, um, and that was sort of like 10 people around the bin. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine it. Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen it. I've, I've been there. It was, uh... Yeah. It's like the discount, like you, when you, uh, like the yellow stickers at Sainsbury's. But yeah. no, like. Yeah, they're in queues waiting for you. It's like, oh, what have you got there? Is, it, is it Asda where they move it all to a specific place? Yeah. And yeah. I remember during COVID, because the general public are animals, um, they had to like barrier it off yeah. for the protection mm. of the staff. And then they'd be like, okay please step away I'm removing the barrier and then would run so Liz away. sometimes yeah. likes to get like you know like cheap fish and stuff like that she, if she wanders if she's like driving back from work she'll be like oh I'll just see if there's any like you know cool bargains or anything like that and she's like it's horrible because all I wanted there was like there was a st and I saw this once there was like a stack of like sausages and then this woman was like sticking this guy's just there waiting and she finished sticking that's when he just took the whole lot and went oh wow so like, like you know like a mm. proper savage mm. and he's there going 10p is that the best you can do can you not knock it down anymore and I'm like you scum so like it, yeah. I know we were in like yeah. a bit of a recession and stuff like that, but come on, that's mate. it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. As soon as I've made that comment, I'm like, no, like it must be horrible, like trying to scrimp and save on everything. Yeah, and you're yeah. gonna go for a deal, aren't you? Well, but, yeah, so, but I mean, there's yeah. there's that. But there's, you, do you need 16 packs of sausages for yourself that are going to go in the freezer and probably get wasted, or maybe take two or three? 
Yeah. Same yeah, the other people that are like the other 20 people queuing. Good point. That's, yeah. that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that, this is why I know Liz hates zombie movies. Right. Because it's not about the zombies, although they probably scare her a bit. She hates the humans mm. because yeah, yeah. they are stupid and yes. they will kill you for a fresh pair of pants or yes. a fresh pair of shoes and she's yeah. like she hates the idea of dystopian like living and stuff like she's like everyone's just going to murder everyone and she's like and I know this because I go to Asda and see the bargain section and everyone's just <laughs> in it for themselves and they're horrible humans and I'm like yeah, yeah you're not wrong have you, ever, have you ever played a board game called Dead of Winter no oh, it's brilliant it's um, it is like it's a zombie board game and you're survivors and you're in your little base that's all secure and you've all got to work together to sort of achieve these common goals and you might have to go out and get some ammunition or you might have to go and get some medicine and it's like right we're all working together you go here we'll go here. but you may maybe not but you may have one person in there who's a complete traitor and is going to ruin it all for everyone else and it's just it's like humanity just in a board it's like okay we've got our four bits of food 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 rubbish oh no we're going to starve that's two more zombies out if someone dies i think we're going to lose the game like just because someone's someone's out for themselves yeah and it's just yeah, Ooh, it's, yeah. it's horrible I like that I need, yeah. to, need to play that, oh, that that's a good fun. one yeah. uh, just a quick one for you Jeff so yes. uh, obviously you've dropped in from the ceiling I uh, have a nicely done nicely done uh, yeah. John John is uh, was a commissioning editor for uh, Games Workshop so um, basically commissioned out artwork and everything that wasn't Warmer TV that was Warmer external community. Warmer Community yeah. that was external or internal uh, you basically dealt with, didn't you? So, yes. like uh, the influencer program, which is going to be my question now okay, about on. the influencer program. What what was the or is because it might change because is the criteria criteria to getting on the influencer program? How do you go about doing that? If I was like, I want to go on the influencer program, what do I need to do? Well, so there there was specific criteria um, when I was there, and I will confess I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was something. I think I remember at the time I started, you needed if you're a YouTube channel, you needed ten thousand followers yeah. for your YouTube channel. Um, and then what so you we did, got that ticked. yeah, yeah. And then you should write an email to whatever the community inbox email yeah. is and say, "I'd like to be part of the the either the influence program or whatever you want to call it." And um, yeah, hopefully you'd get a reply. Um, it can, you know, that inbox is back when I was doing it was not <clears throat> particularly well monitored by me. That was my fault entirely. But you um, did have like twenty five thousand plates to spin. So yes, I exactly. That. But um, but yeah, but then I think by the time I left, I think they'd moved that number up to you needed thirty thousand. Oh, okay. um, and I, I think it all changed. And again, like like I was saying, TikTok came in. And suddenly it was like, well, what do we use the threshold for if mm. you're a TikTok influencer mm. or? Um, and then uh, I'm sure it will happen with threads, for example, if you know that really takes off. It's like, oh, what do we, you know, yeah. how many threads followers do you have followers on threads? I, I think so. I, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it went to because loads of people are on all of the platforms. I think yeah. we have a presence on pretty much everything apart oh, yeah. from an official Twitter because yeah. it's accessible. So we take that into account as well, and especially if you were more so. Um, there were a couple of people we had who were more Middle Earth focused, mm. so we'd they wouldn't get 40k stuff or AOS stuff, but they'd get yeah. Middle mm. Earth stuff, and that was a much smaller audience. Yeah, so it was their threshold a bit lower. It would have been. Yeah, we'd, we'd always take that into account. And again, yeah. if you were spread out over every single channel and they were they were all quite healthy, we yeah. might be like, yeah, all right, fine, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I do think it's changed a bit then because, um, and I can see why. I suppose mm. some people get a bit grumbly on the internet because mm. there are, there are influencers out there that only have like 200 followers or mm -hmm. uh, a thousand stuff like that so mm -hmm. i guess um whatever that criteria is um, yeah has obviously changed a bit because it makes sense if you because yeah. if you i know you hate the term influence if you're a mm -hmm. creator and you want to spread that out you need yeah. a following to spread it out so. absolutely yeah but i mean uh, again it's if the, they're in a specific space if they're doing a specific thing yeah and they happen to be the biggest even if their numbers are low they might be worth yeah. bringing on board because yeah. that's how you help grow them and you know i will also say being nice helps. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I was al always operated on the basis that, you know, I was always tried to be as nice as I could to um, our partners. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I always believe that you get what you give. And um, I had pretty good relationship with, I think, 98, 99% of the people we worked with. And um, well, Tell us about friends. the two then. I can't. I won't. <laughs> I, uh, let sleeping dogs lie. As, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing worth saying that. But yeah, it's. Uh, but yeah, that was always it. It was just, you know, if you if you have the follower numbers, um, mm. and especially you know, look at if if you if you wanted to become an influencer, say, um, you, I would also suggest maybe there's probably a lot enough people doing AOS and 40k 
if you've got a passion for Necromunda or mm. Blood Bowl or Warcry or um, a smaller game system, um, go based on that. Yeah. Go say, I'd, I'd like to, you know, I'm a huge into Warcry. I, I'll write loads of articles about it. I'll do loads of videos. I'll TikTok it. I'll threads it. I'll do all of that. And, and that might help as well. Yeah, yeah that's um, good, good advice. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. But I mean, again, I haven't been there for three years, so but, it may have changed. Yeah, yeah. Well. That's yeah. the constant games workshop. Change. It is, it is, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, was, uh, I never had a desk for more than two months at one oh, point. I used to hate the idea of hot desks, <laughs> certainly from a painter. Like, I, I had liked my own area set up in a very specific mm. way because mm. I like being a left hander. I like, I might want my paints there. I've got my water here. My, my tea goes there. I've got my tools there. So, everything, and then. I like the way tea went with higher priority. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tools, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the thing was, right, what I used to. It's, it's a bugbear of mine, and I don't mind people using my space as long as they leave it as they found it. Yep. I'm okay with people going into my area and uh, at lunchtimes if I'm off and going, oh, I'm just going to sit at Peach's desk and use his, his, his cutting mat and just paint some models. I'm going to bring my own paints and my own brushes. I might pour the water out and get some new water. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you leave the dirty water in. I'm okay with that. Um, but when all my paints are all over the place, haphazard, and I've got a tray where it's all colour-coded, mm -hmm. and then when people take like 90% of them out and just have them in a mess... Yeah. on my desk I'm like I spent hours colour coding that mm. thanks for screwing up my method and then my super glue's gone my paintbrush is gone my knife's gone and I get to my desk I'm like right okay <laughs> who's been here I'm like yeah. oh um, such and such was on your desk I was like cool I'm just going to take that keyboard and mouse then yeah yeah. what are you what, what, how de what, what, what are you doing I was like well you've stopped me from doing my job so yeah. I'm, yeah. I've got some gaming I want to do tonight you've got a nice mouse and a nice keyboard so I'm going to borrow that if you don't mm, mind yeah. mutually yeah. assured mm. destruction <laughs> I like that you clarified. You know, you initially said your space, and then you said your desk, because your space was always the kitchen. Because you were like, oh, yes, the yeah. <laughs> so many people, that literally, like the CEO, would be like, "Are you, are you here again? Then <laughs> <laughs> do you ever work?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> this is my office. Get out, Kev." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whilst offering chocolate balls, which mm. I'm told not to do. Mm. <laughs> Um, you also commissioned art for the web comics, you said. Yeah, what? I worked with. Um, I don't think they Amazing. do web comics anymore, but yeah, um, yeah we. I was there at the start of that, and um, we started off with role models. My favourite set, by the way. Oh, what, yeah. Whose idea was it to call the uh, Griffound Archibald? By the way, because that was oh, I can't remember the name it. of the Griffound on live when we did. Yes. I, I named one of the Griffounds Archibald. Oh, yes. oh, it would have been you then. Yeah. You no, I, 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 yeah, I, I thought, I I thought you were fishing. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I didn't name it. No, I mean, I named it for. Warm and light, yeah. that was the name of the dog, but then someone turned the dog in the webcomic to be called Archibald. Oh, right. In yeah, like, I, retrospect to like yeah. homage the old dead dog that got murdered several times on live. I think it would have, well, yeah, it would have, we would have just seen that and someone said, well, we'll <laughs> have to call it Archibald. forever. And, yeah. Because <laughs> um, they, they still have some webcomics going. Oh, good. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm glad about um, that because there were some great ones on there. I watched, uh, I watched, I read one recently. There's like these, a bunch of different space marines from chapters and they're like escorting a little girl around. And, oh, yeah. And um, one of them like kills a Necron and picks up its skull, checks no one's watching and then starts reciting Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the Necron starts to reanimate and he stamps on it. <laughs> um, that's, um, that's Big Brothers, which is done yes. by, um, uh, that's Ruo Yu Chen, um, who's from Hong Kong. Um, uh, yeah, he did a few. Uh, he did that great one. I don't know if you remember Chaos Undecided. Yes, Chaos Undecided. Yeah, it was only oh, ten e uh, episodes, but it was great. It was a, a <laughs> legion, who, oh, well, a chapter who decided to turn to Chaos, and they wanted to check what what legion should they join, and so they go to each one of the different nine legions, and they decide they're all terrible. <laughs> 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 but no, I think they go to eight, and then in the end, they're just like, oh yes, I'm Alpharius. Yeah, and then it all turns out they're Alpha, Alpha Legion anyway. So it was uh, yeah. amazing, but, oh, fun. But yes, they go to the, like go and see the Death Guard, and he's like, hey, bro and his arm just falls off as he's waving and I'm like no don't want to be there no and then you go and see the night lords and they're like where is everyone this guy just appears behind them and like, no don't like them don't like them either so, oh that sounds yeah. amazing yeah. I, I think is like something I've I think what we discussed yesterday a little bit was that you can kind of tell how how healthy a community is or like by the amount of memes that get generated yeah. and, and I think I, I like the web comics because Games Workshop self-aware enough to like know like the funny yeah. elements yeah. of it and, um, and I think that should be commended yeah and that was one I always had to well occasionally I had to argue uh, on Roe behalf 
um, because they wanted to change, like in editorial, they wanted to change the way someone looked. And I'd be like, no, that's like the perfect meme face. That will go all over the internet. Yeah. Space Marine with his eyes and a happy sort of like yeah. smiley face, yeah. but on a helmet. And they're like, but helmets don't do that. It's like, yeah, but, but don't think that that's not the point. It looks yeah. brilliant yeah, though. Yeah. It's like, okay, okay. It's so. not about making it real, is it? No, no. <laughs> in fact, do you know what uh, I... Dr. Jeff, um, who did the Spanners webcomic, the Orc one. Oh, yeah. Was that you, Jeff? Afraid not. No. No. Doctor and Barber. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I didn't have my PhD. I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> say, Dr. Jeff, he actually was a doctor of, I think, astrophysics or something, and decided he didn't like that, so he just started drawing comics. Nice. Um, and I hate space. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and he just, he, he's, he, he's lovely. He's one of the loveliest people. Completely mad, but lovely. Mm. And uh, he's done a game that, that he's definitely trialled I've seen him trial it it's called Biscuit Wars oh and you play it with biscuits oh my god on a map oh my god and I think like when you defeat someone you eat their biscuit <laughs> I think that's what it is this, this is our yeah, game yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, Biscuit Wars, Wars. yeah so, and do you like if, is, is it like um, uh, in my head now I'm thinking risk and you have like an army one one biscuit counts as an army two biscuit stacks three biscuits and if you defeat you have to like defeat the stack Ooh, and you have yeah, to eat yeah. the stack ah. you'll have to check with him that's Sounds about right. That's, I've seen awesome. a picture of this, uh, like play testing it, and I was like, "Yeah, that's def. That's looks like." I wonder if you can torture them by dunking them into tea as well. Go, no, 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 no. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that might be a, like, drafts, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice, yeah. yeah. Mm. You have to keep some aside for obviously crown them. Yeah. 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 Is that mm. when you give birth? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, nice. Maybe Sorry. we are. <laughs> <It's> the <laughs> only time I've ever heard that term. Yeah. As well as, what was it we were saying the other day about clout? Uh, yeah. That Liz hates the term clout because it's like a lady device on like, the Victorian eras. All right. For oh, right. sensitive areas. Oh. Uh, she's mm. like, that's not. I still don't know. She'd probably correct me now in the comments going, no, know. it's this. And, mm. and someone else might correct me in the comments going, no, it's this. Uh, mm. But yeah, she's like, why do you keep using the word clout? It's horrible. <laughs> like, okay, I'm sorry. You'd be like, clout. Because I'm, I'm an influencer, babe, and I've yeah. got clout. <laughs> don't you mean a creator? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really liked uh, the webcomics. Uh, I, I read most of them. Um, I did like the. The Stormcast, the role models one. Yeah, I think great. that was my favourite the lot. Yeah, and I, I actually wrote out. a couple of those. You also? I wrote a couple of those. Did you? Yeah, we were short a couple of scripts and I just wrote them out and oh, I got Which ones do you remember? Which ones you wrote? I did one where they, um, they're walking through a forest and, and Archibald is growling at a rock and they're like, what's wrong with him? And the rock licks his head up and it's a giant, um, what's that big Iron Jaws dragon? Thing. Oh, the uh, Moor Crusher. Crusher. Yeah, 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 it's one of them. And Johan shows them all how to run away. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Johan, if you don't know, is the little man running away from the giant. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And for that. one reason or another, we wanted to paint one for Warmer Community, and I painted and got the little Warmer Community badge on his mm. t shirt at the front, because we used to have the grey shirts, yeah. um, which had its own name internally mm. with other companies, which I don't know, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I hated. Um, and you have like the symbol on the back, so I just painted him to this shirt to look like the Warmer TV yeah. grey, but the, the back on the back and he became like the little poster boy for a lot of things which <laughs> then made it into role models weirdly as well it did yeah and I, well, it started off with Forge World though didn't it because Forge World used to include a shot of Johan in yes, all of their monsters they did yeah. that's right Let's so Forge World to blame for yeah. Johan Forge World blame for a lot of things aren't they? they are <laughs> but we love them we, <laughs> we love do them. we do absolutely we do we're to blame them for Necromundo which is a good blame it's the best yes. thank you Forge World yes that is thank you <laughs> yes. That's good. Um, so, how long were you at workshop for then? Because about felt, three and a half years. It felt longer. Thanks. Uh. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, it's, well, it's a, I was there over COVID, so you know, time warped into a strange yeah, place, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that, but yes. Um, but yeah, it was. I, I was there very much at a time when community went from being able to fit everyone in the old white dwarf office when it was quite small, mm, and yeah. well, you and. Duncan were in the room next door. I yes, think. yeah, we had like a little TV group and yes. the editors and videographers. Then obviously, yeah, all the all the righty people. Yeah, to then going to like a hundred people or whatever it was, and yeah. so over that time period was was there. So it, a lot of change, I think. Yeah, I was there it, for. it just feels longer because I mean, I was only in. I, I started when Charlie was born. Mm. He's literally going to turn six this month, oh, and yeah, I've been out yeah. of the business for a year. Yeah, so. Um, which is a shame. Which means I can't now return with my ten-year status. No. You uh, can't. So oh well, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've always like I'm sure I was there longer than five years because it felt longer than five years. Maybe yeah. that's just the, the effect of community. You just feel well, like you've been there longer. Well, a lot. Yeah, it was. It was always busy. Yeah. It was, uh, I'd never been. It was weird going back to a job uh, outside of Warhammer community afterwards. 
I felt really guilty because I wasn't rushing around doing stuff all the time. And I was like, people are like, no, this is what normal people like. You don't have to yeah. be like running around an office for. Why were you running uh, around? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, had coll- I had to collect things and you'd go and see people would be like, oh, yeah, someone's got some uh, miniatures that you need to go pick up and take to the photography. So, oh, right, okay, do that. And then you'd come back and so I'd be like, oh, have you got this book? I was like, no, it's in the post room. So you have to run to the post room, get the book, yeah. hand it over. And then so I'd be like, oh, there's a guy in the hall who's got this amazing army. You've got to go and see it. So, right, go out to the hall, go and see that and then you sit down it'd be lunchtime you'd be like alright oh, I've got to go to lunch and get to <laughs> come back sit down and then it'll all start again yeah, and, yeah. you know and eventually you get to your emails and you'd be like I could do one email and yeah. off again I mean most of my days were spent splitting Duncan Smarties into colours yeah uh, so you had to do that didn't you well, yeah, I mean I remember the violence yeah, yeah, the it was, yeah it was terrifying <laughs> it was, you know it was, I don't and know. that to be in, in like like rainbow order as well oh, yeah. yeah so brown like nothing less yeah. brown was tricky yeah. Yeah. where does brown fit in the rainbow I used to put it between green and red just in case yeah, they didn't yeah. notice yeah. but uh, he did notice oh, every yeah. time I'll, they'll never fix that wall no. <laughs> it's just got a picture of like a yeah, shape of me yeah, through it yeah, like yeah, that yeah. <laughs> yeah it's terrible he used to be quite strong when he got mad yeah. he'd left in the car once yeah he did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Was, with, uh, with Kev Roundtree in it it was yeah it was <laughs> It's way left I think. yeah it was absolutely <laughs> you didn't have a choice yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I used to uh, I used to love uh, having John uh, walk by because we got some mints there. We used to offer him some mints. There used to be a selection of like Murray mints and mm. humbugs, uh, all sorts yes. of random glacier mints. Yeah, well. Well, I, I like the butter mints the most. You, you yes. do, I, I do like they last longer. I think. Yeah, uh, humbugs. They've got like I reckon a a minute to two minute life expectancy. Yeah, uh, whereas I'm quite a chewer of yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're very a, nice to chew. I'm a bite yeah, yeah. I, I do bite hard when I got yeah. them into my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, after I left, I lost about half a stain because I wasn't being so on the every day. I think I <laughs> may have been responsible for some diabetes. Look at the yeah. yeah. sugar in that. I know. I know. Oh yeah, God. it is a proper traffic like that. It's got less it salt is, in it. Yeah. It's got all it's the colours. Good. It's got one percent <laughs> salt in it, so you're fine. Great, I won't get cramp. Yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> so obviously you left workshop. Yeah. Um, sad times for me. Yeah, missed well, out on yeah. the long locks. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and also, the, oh, you got some stuff here. So uh, yeah. John does some amazing freehand. Uh, he's done like uh, Titans and Knight, Imperial mm. Knights with like almost John Blanche esque battle scenes. I've done a few, yeah, yeah little yeah, ones. So, yeah. um, your Instagram page is now My Life in Miniatures. Yeah. Does it still show those things on it? Yeah, I, I, I've had to sort of go back through and find bits and pieces. And every now and again, I, I, I go to point it out to someone, I'm like, oh, I never uploaded that. I need to put it back on there. Mm. And um, yes, it's freehanding is always a passion of mine, which came from. Um, a, a slight mistake on my part, which was oh, I decided mistake. years ago to do, I wanted to do a Space Marine Army. As you do, everyone has a phase where you do a Space Marine Army, don't you? And um, no, no, I've never had that. Not, <laughs> fair enough. Um, Unless I was paid to do I knew, it. I knew you wouldn't, but yeah. Um, I, I wanted a chapter, I didn't want to make my own, but I didn't want one of the well known ones. So mm. I wanted to do and I decided to do Mortar Factors mm. on the basis that I thought their emblem is just a skull. I was like, great. Games Workshop do a, a shoulder pad with a skull on it. Just buy loads of those. Perfect. What's the one thing that Games Workshop don't put skulls on? <laughs> shoulder pads. So I, I already There's started skulls playing on you. everything else. Everything else. <laughs> not a shoulder pad. I mean, you can get the silver skulls one, yeah. or you could at the time, but that's got the sort of stylized grill at the bottom. Yeah, it didn't yeah. look right. So I had to. I was like, well, what am I going to do? And I thought I could do transfers, but I was always rubbish at transfers. Mm. I mean, it was because I'd, at the time, this is long before I worked at Workshop, I'd never heard of Microsoft and Microsoft, and, mm. I'd, and I'd never bothered learning about glossing it and matting it and doing all that stuff. And so I was like, what am I going to do? And I just thought, I'm going to have to paint skulls. I'm going to have to paint a lot of skulls. And the first ones I did, I was quite proud of at the time, but I look back on now and they were pretty ropey. Mm. They were terrible, actually. But the last ones I did... By the time I did uh, my hundredth and something skull, I was pretty good at painting skulls. Right, yeah. mm. well, I've, um, seen, I've seen your battle scenes, so if that's well, to yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, they, they, I took a model to an, a Forge World Open Day, and it ended up going to an email, and it's because it was a Mortar Factors chapter master that I'd made out of a Forge World Praetor, and I'd put a big boarding shield on him, and I'd done a big skull on the boarding shield, and everyone was cooing over the skull, and uh, great. And then I realised it's all. I really, what I really liked was that journey from. I don't know if you ever watched Adventure Time, where yeah, um, yeah where Jake says, um, "Kind of sucking at something is the first step to being kind of good at something." Mm. And it, I really like that journey of getting from kind of sucking at something to 
been quite good at something. I mm. always thought they were quite a cool chapter. Yeah. Because yeah, I think yeah, the yeah. first time I came into contact with them, they were in whatever that guy, they, they did a ch- series of books about an ultramarine. Uriel Ventress. Thank you. Yeah. And he ends up on one of their ships and he's really, yes. really freaked out because it's just like <laughs> polished skulls everywhere. Because yes. they're like, they're an ultramarine they're like, successor. Yeah, but, but they, they, they're like from a planet that's like virtually in constant darkness. Yes, in the catalyst yes, on their own planet. Yes, and it's they're not, fun. They're, and yeah. they're not massive. They're well, a bit, no, it's like that sort of like, we'll work with them, but just try not to talk to them if you can help it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, um, yeah it's Warriors of Ultramar by Euro Ventress, which is uh, uh, by Graham McNeil. No, no, please, um, I want it to be by Euro Ventress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he, he, wrote, he, was, he was doing autobiographical stuff at the time. Yeah. Um, Does it start with Dear Diary? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he does go to their. Well, they they live in a space station above that, their planet because yeah, their planet's right. all in darkness, and and they sort of go, oh, they're all, they're ultramarine successors. They'll be on our side, of course. And they open the door, and this guy's just like smeared with ash and like covered in skulls. And like yes, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like oh god, is it one of them? Um, and uh, it's uh, yes, and they go off and they fight this battle, and the ultramarines are sort of in their perfect line and doing their everything by the book. And the Mortifact is just charging forward into these tyranids, like woo woo, you know, it's like. Get them all, and uh, the Ultramarine's like, "Oh my god!" What sure, they're not space wolf. Yeah, they're not it's like, it's, it's, <laughs> the only other book that rivals that is one of the Space Marine Battles one, and it's the Flesh Terrors teaming up with the Nova Marines. The Nova Marines are more Ultramarine than Ultramarine, mm. and they sort of knock on the Flesh Terrors' door to be like, "Oh, they're our brother. They're Blood Angels' successors. They'll they'll be fine. They're great." And the Flesh Terror pretty much opens the door, wiping or the um, no the Blood Drinkers. They are. And, oh yeah, the Blood Drinkers. Yeah, yeah, opens the door, just like wiping blood off his mouth. Yeah, sorry, who are you guys? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So it's uh, <clears throat> fine. Hello. Yeah, so upstanding Space Marines definitely don't drink a lot of blood. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> What's the chapter name? Oh, coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the others were taken, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Had to be blood something, didn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. We've had yeah. blood shitters, so <laughs> it's the only time for us. Oh, no. <laughs> if it came in Nurgle uh, yeah. chapter for some reason, I don't know why. But, yeah, that was the book that I read to get a lot of this stuff from for when I painted some awesome. artifacts and, and, yeah, and just went to painting skulls and then decided, I was like, what else can I paint? What else can I, can I paint stars? And that's why I ended up my... Um, uh, Stormcast army are all sort of washed out quite tried to do them quite blunt jitsui with all mm. sort of rust and streaks and I just got a black star on a Korean background that's their only sort of identifying yeah. mark and so that, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, I've always seen the stuff you do is very blunt jitsu mm. um, and that's something Blanche obviously started oh, I can't, would have been like the 90s probably yes. like the 2000s they had articles yeah, yeah. in White Dwarf on it um, it's I love his artwork and I love the style it is but I've never fancied or been driven to paint miniatures and that mm. stuff, but I know there's a massive following. And as someone who yeah. obviously likes that kind of stuff, what is it that draws you into the, the Blanchett's sort of style of painting as opposed to just the, the wacky conversions and the... I suppose it's, well, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is that degree of imagination. It is also that grimdark thing. Um, I think, so when... Warhammer, so I feel I put you on the spot. No, no, it's, it's a good question. <laughs> if, when Warhammer 40,000 starts out, it was, it was very much a, a, a British science fiction. Mm. And British science fiction is inherently funny and a bit silly and a bit tragic. Mm. You know, it's sort of British people wandering around space going, I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> um, and then by third edition, um, it had morphed into more of an American science fiction mm. where it's, you know, superheroes in space. Yeah. Everyone's serious. Everyone's going to win the day and be the good guys. What Blanche's stuff did was it straddled all of that and it never really changed. And it gave you uh, a sort of outlet that wasn't linked to a specific science fiction. It was more linked to an artistic style that's more, it, it can be anything. Yeah. Um, and it really plows into that grim dark feel. Yeah. And it's that, that grim dark is, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know what, whether that was part of the British science fiction that it starts out as, or part of the American, or if it just organically came out of yeah, one four thousand and just, and, and and John's artwork because it's his stuff is still incredible. Oh yeah, so you look at it and you just say, how where's that living in your brain that you can translate that into a page? His art is inter- I've always loved his art, and I love that the sort of like the the scratchiness of like the, mm. the the mark making and stuff like that. And it's always been like mad, but sort of. If you imagine you went on to like some kind of weird apothecary's battle barge, mm. uh, there's a battle barge that's full of like, I don't know, some weird pseudoscience apothecary for one of the mortifactors. He's yeah. got his tome of like 
knowledge and dire and so it's that kind of level yeah. of like I'm a madman making sketches yeah, of exactly. things I've experimented on yeah. and it's just like yeah you can and imagine that's, that, that's the style he did but um, yeah I've always loved it I love seeing the stuff that people make and like hmm. seeing the stuff that you do I, I, I like converting stuff like that, but I've never gone down the, the Blanchett suit route but I know there's a huge following with people that, that go down there. oh yeah of course but I think w- what you were saying there about just allowing your imagination to sort of go nuts it, it, that's where the painting comes in as well mm. because you can you're working more in the abstract than the literal you're yeah. not trying to edge highlight everything you're using heavy washes you're using inks um, you're, you're you want something to be representative not literal yeah. so you don't want something to look you don't want it to paint it like it looks like a gun yeah you paint what the shapes that are of the gun in a certain way and, and you use a lot of methods to darken those and, and just slightly lift them back up to sort of create those the tonal shifts in it. Mm. It's not like every metal always works to like really high contrast. Planchets is very low contrast. Yeah. You know, yeah. with a couple of colour pops here and there. Yeah, because usually like the skin, isn't it? It's like the skin usually stands out quite a lot. I've been like an almost sepia of like yes. blemishes and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that and the gun's just like dark. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I now put myself in this terrible position of saying this. <laughs> I'm not the biggest Blanche fan, mm-hmm. but the thing I always I, I, when when people go, oh, how can you not like John Platt? You, you, you can't you can't switch art how you how you perceive art. Yeah, of not. course. Yeah. But what I always have said is, although I don't overly like his style of of, of painting, mm. what I think as a conceptual design, as a man who comes up with a design system of what will eventually become a toy soldier. I just think second to none. I, yeah. uh, the, the the imagination, I love. See, for me, it's um, where I think it hits my that hits the sweet spot for me is I love the Blanche conceptual ideas, and then for me, when they get good, when it gets to where I like it is when Karl Kapinski gets hold of it and goes, "I'll take Flying Baby with Scroll and turn yeah, it into yeah. the gothicness of," yeah. and that's that's my point of it. But you think you need John to have got you there mm. in the first place, and. Yeah. and so for as much as his art style isn't my bag, his, his imagination is, you know, I, I, no, you know, yeah. I, I pray at the altar of his imagination, maybe yeah, not his art style. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah that's fine, fair enough. Yeah, Everyone yeah. each their own. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, but I mean, for me, it was it was seeing his stuff in second edition um, uh, in the rule books, like his little incidental illustrations. I always remember one, it's, um, it's sort of like a castle with it that's shaped like a big skull at the top. And I think there's a little guy on a, on a horseback or something. It's like, but this is supposed to be sci-fi. This looks like a misty moor. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I'm like, oh, but hang on. Yeah, there's a giant gun coming out the top of the castle or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is, you know, that's the idea of it being more science fantasy yeah, than science yeah, fiction. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I suppose that's another part of Blanche. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not the, you know, the greatest exemplar of it, but I, I do enjoy it because it's just so, it's, it's an excuse to be grimy and just yeah, fun yeah. with stuff. And, I, I yeah. never attended it, but I remember um, Tim Malloy, who uh, works mm. in the archive, and Tim, he's a, he's a huge fan of John's stuff. Mm. And they, they did a, I don't know if you were part of it or not, they did an event at Warmer World, which was like, um, I think it was the steps of the, pal- uh, the Empress Palace. No, I would, that was a little bit before. Yeah, yeah. and it was, was just, everyone brought their own little war band, like an inquisitorial yeah. war band of just madness. And yeah. I can't remember what was going off. It was like there, there, there was something being transported, like some weird body or... Yes, yeah, some relic or something. Yes. Yeah, some kind of relic being yeah. kind of carried up, up the stairs, and they made like all the stairs oh, wow. and loads of models, and all these war bands were just duking it out to to try and like someone to stop stopping it from coming through. Others were like trying to get it in there, yeah. and I'm not sure if it was like to to kill the emperor or to do something to the emperor mm. or whatever. But um, it's it, the the photos I saw in White White Dwarf was just like it just looked like it was straight from his artwork, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, it is, and uh, you know, and there are a lot of people like say that are far more gifted out than I am who, who mm. really have taken it to whole new levels and you know just make it look in, insane and wonderful and yeah I did play one game with John once which mm. was um got some friends at the Hackney Area Tabletop Enthusiast Club or oh, Hate, hate Club, club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm friends with a couple of people who are in there oh good yeah, nice yeah, yeah. yeah um so yeah the, the hate guys were up um and they did this thing called Death Race and you bought a couple of like custom buggies and I think the idea it was set somewhere on Kamara um, and it was like just a straight circuit you know um, a big loop and you did two laps of it with your two little buggies and you could fight and they were uh, quite independent and fun little rules for, for those sort of things and um, yeah John came along and brought a little speeder along with him and um, yeah it was just wonderful to see him there having fun and playing a game amazing so, so, yeah. Uh, yeah 
Yeah, because uh, I think he attended that uh, Emperor's. Oh Stairs yeah, he would have done yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always nice when you get like the 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 person that has created that. That yeah. whole style and that ethos, and then they just rock up. We're like, I've yeah, brought yeah. some stuff. Yeah, like, I, know, I yeah. don't care what you brought. You're going in the game. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's really nice seeing him now. Now that he's finished up with Games Workshop, um, he's appeared in a couple of videos already on on YouTube mm. talking about his stuff, and and I, I'm sure he's going to be um, try and get him on here at some point. Yeah, give it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Jeff on at the same time. Just <laughs> um, stuff's all right, John. But you know, yeah. but like it, it'll have. I'm sure he'll be putting out more stuff of his own as well, which I can't wait to see because yeah. it's, I've got a couple of his. I've got things like Rat Spike and mm. Voodoo Forest, and um, again, it's just that level of imagination. Yeah. I just think I always liked his Fem uh, Fatal. Oh yeah, uh, Fem Militant, Fem Militant, Fem Militant yeah. range. Yeah. I, was, I think it was in like four figures and stuff, and I remember having a. Well, there's, quite, someone. there's quite a few and I mean luckily because of this position you've got people like Jez to make them yeah and, yeah. Um, yeah all sorts of great stuff. Tim scotters. Malloy had one on his desk and I was like oh that's amazing mm, yeah. I just remember the tins because there was like loads yes, of like yeah. tins with like a, stilet a stylized stiletto I think it was like almost like a skull going to a stiletto mm -hmm. um, and they were just it was just like I've got loads of these does anyone need them I like, took like 20 of them my wife likes shoes as well so she's just like oh they're cool can I have some of those tins please like, yeah. Yeah. but most of them just got cards and tokens and stuff yeah, like yeah. that yeah kept him for years no I'd so love to have a go on one of those measures the funny thing with John is that when he turns his own style down slightly you end up with some of the most iconic boxes like the cover to the um, the original Sisters of Battle with mm. the, you know the with the the the, the, the I think she's meant to be like a Canon S with oh Canon S Viridian yeah with yeah, the yeah. foot on, yeah. on the so scroll. I've got that picture up there yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which, yeah yeah that's it yeah. Yeah. and then and then again when he um he toned it down into the um, that famous Black Templars on a hill. Yes. Yeah. And the yeah. funny thing yeah. is with them, I adore them. Yeah. And it's just like when it goes way the other way, I'm a bit, oh, oh no, I can't cope. It's too... It's mm. too yeah, I suppose the difference between like cover art and yeah, concept yeah, art. Yeah, exactly. Like, so is, is, you will, is that John Blanche up the top? Yeah, the middle well, one. On, on yeah. the top of the middle as well. Yeah. Yeah. He did a lot for Necromunda. Uh, well, he's done a lot well, for there's, everything. There's, really. that, there's that great myth that um, he actually, uh, they said, oh, we're going to do this game about gangs in Warhammer 40,000 in, in a hive city can you come up with some ideas and he went to Bugman's for lunch sketched out the first six gangs and brought them back and they went yeah that's them yeah, yeah that's that's <laughs> that'll do I mean that may be a complete myth and complete fabrication I, I don't hope it's not though no I it, remember, it adds to his legend I, I was bit. talking to someone recently and um, I think originally it was called Str uh, Confrontation yes that's right and then for a time they were going to call it Street Violence but then they didn't call it that, and then Good. and then it got yeah. called street violence as a separate thing for um, Foundry. They made their own range oh, of things right. called street okay. violence. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's like a Brian Ansell sort of because he, he, he owned Foundry, I think, for a time. Yes, he and, did. Um, yeah. I think. Well, I think he did. Yes. Um, but yeah, so street violence and confrontation are both mm. separate. Well, you know, confrontation mm. from uh, Rackham. Um, Rackham. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just like, I didn't, didn't know that until yeah. quite recently. I was like, mm. I've always thought it was Necromunda. I was like, no, nah, two names. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. if it was street violence first, then confrontation, and then Necromunda all the way around. Yeah, it'd be nice. Like um, talking to Rackham, a lot of the time Rackham did this. Like um, I think it was twice a year uh, magazine, but it was like it was like buying a full color codex. It was magazine is doing is not. It's like journal is probably the yeah. better term. And it used to come out a couple of times a year, and um, it was called Cry Havoc. And what I loved about it was that the art in it. It was very, very, very French, very comic book French art. But you know what he loved was that when you looked at a minute, when they had a spread of a, a piece of art and of a miniature that wasn't out yet, is you'd look at it and no matter how crazy it looked, the miniature would come out and it would look just, just like, like that. It. Yeah, yeah. Like that. And I think it's a shame with, with John Blanche's work that be nice if some of the things that were made were the absolute spit of. Yeah. You know, I think the closest we've probably got in a while is um, that. He's a primus primaris. No, he's not left uh, Castellum for the so from the Black oh, Templars uh, relaunch. Yeah, yeah. Who is literally exactly yeah. the same as the as yeah. he is from that Black Templars piece of art. I think there's been a but couple of movies, yeah. more of that. Yeah, I mean the thing is, it's more if uh, he did that wonderful range of really concept art, and, and the point of concept art is to give a sculptor something just to work off, yeah. like an idea. Like I'm doing a what? So, and the concept artist's job is to give that person an idea of what to do. And if you see his brilliant collection of he did all the Primarchs uh, an individual portrait of each one and if you look at them compared to 
the Forge World Primarchs, you can see so many details that they just lifted straight out of those. They didn't do oh, exact wonderful. proportions. They didn't do, you know, just like Sanguinius's wings don't curl over and they're not enormous, but they were like, right, oh, they're that big. Okay, so I need to make them yeah. like that sort of size. The His sort of sun thing coming up behind his his head and all that. So all that detail is there, but it's it's yeah. how it's yeah. the yeah. sculptor translating it from the concept artist. And, yeah. and yeah. they're very highly revered, those... Uh, Forge World Primark sculpts, aren't they? Yeah, like yeah, lots yeah. of people talk very, very fondly of them. I think yeah. they, they are certainly a high end painter's sort of mm. canvas, if you like, that they yeah. to like really work mm. into and stuff. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've done Conrad Kerr's before. Mm. He was fun, but I've I've had Sanguinius for ages, and I just can't. I'm waiting. I'm building myself up to do Sanguinius. Yeah. <laughs> it's the stuff I look at in a glass cabinet and go, "Oh, that's cool." Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. No, but not, it's not even a forge kit. I've got um, <laughs> the plastic. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for that guy. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I really want to paint Fulgrim as well, mm. but I'm just uh, I'm at the point I've got in Drastos a Age of Sigma um, Stormcast Lady. Uh, she's mega. I've converted her mm. so she's on, not on the stairs because that's a really nice. I want that base just for something else because I want, yeah. want my Stormcast to be on the same sort of base in style. So I've, I've basically built her, but I had some spare swords, so she's got two swords. Mm. Um, and she's got the wings, but I didn't glue the wings on so they pop off. And mm -hmm. everything is, like, done and built in my mind to make my life easier. So the wings are sprayed white, they pop off, so I can just do what I want with those separately. And then I can just mm -hmm. do the old standard gold trim and this, that, and the other. But I want to make her good. So she's just mm -hmm. been in my cabinet for a year, just going, paint me, mm -hmm. paint me, Peachy. I'm like, I will. I want to make you good. You have to wait 14,000 models later. I'll get to you. Oh, yeah. So I've got but, plenty of that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I will get around to doing it. She is like my sort of, I guess, treat for doing a load of bits and bobs for my Stormcast. I yeah. will probably be the last bit. I'll probably be the de last Death Guard player ever to ever paint Mortarian. <laughs> I finally think I might just be able to paint well enough to have a go at it. It's yeah. just green, spraying green and dry brush and bone. <laughs> get, get some typhus corrosion in there, a little bit of Nurgle's rot. You sorted, Jeff. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 Well, the thing is, if you did them neat, you'd be doing the Death Guard a disservice, wouldn't you? Exactly. <laughs> yes. yeah. 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 True. Yeah. Just yeah. like prime him, throw him in a puddle. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a streaking grime. Yeah, Turn him to a puddle of streaking oh, grime. Oh, love streaking. Get him out a week later. Yeah. <laughs> um, so before we started the chat, uh, you said you listened to our conversation with Kiriath. Um, oh, yes. And um, on that discussion of leaks and stuff, yeah, yeah. you said you wanted to talk. Uh, yeah. around well, that topic you know, it was just something that Kiriath mentioned that I thought I'd, I'd, I'd bring up just because um, you know leaks are and you know the most annoying thing in the world yeah, oh, um, when some crappy little grainy picture comes out and it's like oh well that's ruined three weeks of work that we've all been planning and yeah, um, yeah. Um, so yeah we'd uh, I remember it happening a couple of times where something would be leaked I can't, I can't remember I think there was a store in it was I think it was a GW store in Malaysia or Singapore or somewhere like that that had accidentally put out a, a box that a bit was being released mm. and they put it in the store and someone taken photos of it and off it went and around the world and it was like oh great that's not coming out for however long and we've got to deal with that now um, so all of the uh, partners that we'd sent the product to um we had told them, like, okay, um, 22nd of June, that's the day you can yeah. publish your stuff. Uh, that's uh, the disclosure date. You can do whatever you like with it after that point. Um, it was probably the beginning of June at some point, and I get the message from uh, my managers that you tell the, you know, it's all out there now. There's no point in keeping it secret. Uh, you can tell all the influencers that they can publish their stuff. And so I'd send this email, and it annoyed more of them than it made them happy. Because mm. if you think, if you're a, if you're a miniature painter and uh, you do it professionally and uh, you factored in the time to do it and suddenly someone goes, oh, I'm going to take the last two weeks away from you there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because you, yeah, you've, yeah, you've so, scheduled your own time. Yeah, the, pe the painters would often go back to me and say, it's not ready, I haven't got it done. I yeah. I'm not going to get it done for a couple of weeks. And it's like, fine. And then you'd get other people, especially people who were working on... YouTube videos who were in the middle of editing when yeah. you'd said, oh, you can go live with it now. And they're like, oh, can't I, you know, yeah. why? And yeah. It really annoyed more of them than can, it made happy. I suppose from our point of view, I can appreciate that more because there'll be some that uh, either don't have as much editing to do yeah. or they um, can edit faster yep. or have a shorter um, sort of, I guess, video so it doesn't take mm. as long to edit. That they're going to get their stuff out first, which is then they're going to get all the footfall, yep. 
and it's just going to take away from some of the people that yeah. spent. I'm not saying that anyone spent more work than others. It's just like no, but as opposed to all coming out at the same time, yeah, there's almost like it's it's an arms race now. Yeah. So like, if it was a, a codex, for example, if you've got a guy who uh, is sat in front of a, his screen, um, reading out, talking to uh, his audience, and is doing a really great job with it. That is a lot less involved than someone who has invited someone else over to have a game, yeah. has to edit all the gaming footage and, you know, editing an actual footage of a, a game we know takes absolutely ages mm. to get it, mm. you know, and to a state you want it to and look it's like. And you can start any earlier because you only get the samples at a certain, exactly. certain point. So it's like, exactly. you could argue like, well, you know, maybe you should have a, a couple of weeks buffer and start a month in advance. Yeah, but I don't get the thing no. until this point. So no. I can't physically start the thing until this point. Yeah. And because some... You know, someone's took a potato cam yep. uh, of, of the thing. And that was the other thing I'll say. When I was looking after all the influencers, I would, I'd swear on this, not a single one of them ever leaked anything. Mm. And, yeah. and it was always when something did leak, I'd, I'd get told about it. I'd walk in the office in the morning, get told something was leaked, be like, oh, great. So that's what today's going to be about, is it? Yeah. And then I'd also get someone come up and say, uh, we need to check it wasn't one of your yeah. people. And I was like, well, it wasn't one of my people. Why yeah. are they going to shoot themselves in the foot? If yeah. we find out it's them, we just stop sending them stuff. Yeah. And it ruins their, you know, if they're trying to make a career yeah. out of yeah. a YouTube channel, for yeah. example, well, it just ruined it for them. People that generally post stuff online know how to take good pictures. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's another key thing to I, it. Yeah. I did lose my rag once at workshop because we, it was when the, oh, I can't remember which Horace Heresy set it was. It was either like Burning a Prosper or something like that. It was like a load of plastics were coming out for um, um, Horace Heresy to go in a game. And we had a couple of new starters and they had got some stuff and they were painting it. And they were <laughs> and it like, literally, when you've done, it goes in the cabinet, it's locked at night and you go out the door because we had like, a little painting room. And some stuff had been leaked and it was like a load of sprues on a lino floor um, and it was like photographed. Yeah. And we had some people from miniatures come up and I mean, they're only doing their job granted, but what annoyed me was they wouldn't let it lie. So they came up and they, they, they came to her like, okay, some pips have been leaked. Can we check everyone's desks? I was like, what do you mean? I was like, we need mm. to check everyone's desks. I was like, that's not a desk, that's a floor. They're like, yeah, but we need to check everyone's desk to make sure. I was like, well, there's only two people working on it and the sprues you gave us are the sprues that are on the desks because they've not started building yet. So nothing's been built. Oh, sorry, no, no, they had been mm. built. So that was the thing. They've all been built and they were built yesterday. When did this leak happen? Oh, it just happened last night and uh, it's just come through this morning. I was like, well, that can't be, it's not, no one in here. Because they were built yesterday, mm. yeah. um, and they're still finishing off some mold line stuff. Like, yeah, but we need to check the desk. I was like, no, I've told you. There's the door. You can leave, uh, and they just won't let it lie. And yeah. I had to go through like a whole load of like chats with like my boss and their boss. I was like, trust me. Yeah, these guys have not leaked anything because they were built yesterday when this thing happened. So they couldn't have no. like gone to some random. Pre pre <coughs> presuming, I mean, maybe they obviously I trust you and your judgment and your staff. But I, would you think they'd be like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture, then I'm gonna build it, and then I'll post the no, picture. No, it wouldn't be possible because one, okay. they, they were built before the leak. Yeah, sorry, but they could take the picture a few days ago, or did they start building like no, straight no, away? No, because the stuff was locked. There's, that that line oh, did not exist. Right, sorry, that, right. That yeah, flooring yeah, yeah. did not exist at Games Workshop. Right. Okay. Yeah. Those things yeah. were locked in the cabinet at the end of the night. Yes. And they were, oh right, yeah, okay, I understand. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, and, that, and so, so nothing matched up with anything that happened in that room, and I'm yeah, just like, cool. I was like, I'm getting really annoyed with this now. <laughs> yeah, okay, like, yeah, no, trust I, me. I can understand. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I wasn't quite sure. But yeah, like, that's yeah. the way I explained it because I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't often help, but uh, I was a lot more uh, uh, direct at that point. Mm. Uh, whereas now I'm just a bit more of an arty farty artist. Mm. It's just a bit whimsical and a little bit like, oh, it's just a bit arty farty. It's the way to be, darling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, that, that was like a big yeah. bugbear with me with like, sometimes when we get leaks, there would be, well, I hate to use the word witch hunt, but it was very sort of like. There, there would be, yes, inquisitions. Yes. Into it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, very um, appropriate. We need to, uh, you need to open your drawer and show us yeah. your stuff. I'm like, I've been here 20 years. Do you really think I want I to leak something? No, yeah. It, <laughs> especially if you, if you had any sort of skin in a project and, whether from like a designing standpoint or um you know for us if we'd sort of designed a marketing campaign for something that took you know mm. months or something not that yeah. i did much of that designing but if that had been created you know it just screws everyone over so it's it was always probably someone who just wanted internet points yeah and yeah, that, didn't really yeah, care yeah, yeah. about warhammer to be honest yeah. um, i bet that store as well because I, I i would 
I almost can feel the, the, the story thread that's happened. Mm. New key timer comes in, manager goes, mm. empty that box, put on the shelves, please. Yeah, yeah. New key timer doesn't really know the full range of the models at this point, just going, cool, la di da di da. Random hobbyist that's been around for years goes, that's new. I know the, yeah. I know the internet. I know they're going to like this. Snap. Yeah, yeah. And new staff member's like, oh, ah, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> you see it all the time in because um, I keep my hands on a little bit with um, collecting Star Wars figures. Mm. Oh, and you see it all the time in like an American Walmart. Mm, yeah, yeah, away, yeah, yeah. This yeah, these aren't meant to be out till the end of the month. I've now come in and bought the whole range. Yeah, of them. yeah, and then on eBay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think yeah. that happened. I'm trying to remember when because when I was there, Games Workshop started doing these like um, entry games that went were sold on, in Target in the US oh, and Barnes and Noble and all. Yeah, that Barnes and Noble. And really good was, games, by the way, which we don't sell in the UK, which well, is so frustrating. Yeah, some of them were, were good. <laughs> <laughs> right, they had some. They, they had the models that I needed that you could yeah. get elsewhere. That's that's what. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. Yes, um, but yes, I'm sure one of them. I, one of those ended up in a Barnes Noble like months before it was supposed to be revealed. Oh, great, we've got to push all this forward. And yeah, because there's Combat Arena, which was all of the Blackstone Fortress uh, escalation models that you couldn't get. Yes, um, the, which was so frustrating. I was like, I need those models. But that was based on that um, AOS game. It was the Corn Slaughter Pit or something. Wasn't yes, it? Or, uh, yes, uh, Gore Chosen, which Gore I still Chosen. have, and it's a great game. It's a great game. Whoever, the, uh, I think, oh, yeah, it was James Stewart. James Stewart, yeah. James Hewitt, yeah. <laughs> But it doesn't work in 40k because everyone's got guns. You don't have to move. Yeah. You just, they all stand there. There's no movement phase. See, this is the <laughs> thing that annoys me with that game is what they should have done was done uh, the, the arena of Kamara. Yeah. Right. And give them daggers. Yep. And the only people that have guns, if they're guns at all, are like the little filament, like, mm. and the weird sort of like, because uh, it'll be the witches fighting. The witches yeah. like to use their hydro gauntlets. They like to, like to use their horrible shredding blade things. Mm. Um, they're just horrible people, the Dark Elves are. They generally mm. uh, Dark Eldar, yeah. Drakari. Oh, God, I'm going to get cancelled mm. now because I said their names all wrong. Uh, space Elves that are dark. Uh, bondage Elves, that's what they actually are, aren't they? The Bondage Elves. Well, some of them are, certainly. Yeah. Definitely are. Yeah. Well, I mean, they left the party early. Mm. Um, so that shows how. Uh, we talked about this before about the end of uh, the birth of Slanesh. Even, yeah. even the yeah. Chikara like, oh, <laughs> this is a bit too. A bit too <laughs> and they're the, they're the bad ones. <laughs> they're the mm. real bad ones. Mm. <laughs> what was going off in that town? Just they were like, I'm just going to stick to skinning people. Yeah. Yeah. He's stitching his mouth to his bum. Why? Uh, <laughs> Let's get out. Let's go to Kamara. Let's make our own town. This is weird. I always get thinking of the hedonism bot from Futurama. I don't yeah. remember the name, but John Beer, the chocolate sauce, and just this robot that's mo uh, yeah. made to look like he's reclining on a chaise long, yeah. and just having this sort of big muscular man spooning chocolate sauce onto his stomach. He's like, oh my, oh, <laughs> I, oh. Uh, yeah. I haven't thought about that in so long. Yeah. But that's so why I always glad. imagine the fall of yeah. the Eldar was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 John Beer, the chocolate sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that now. Like, Unlike Kirioth, I can imagine all this right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's not. I didn't need that. That's nightmare fuel. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So you um, have your own podcast. I do. You My life it. in miniatures. Yeah. I, uh, yes, you decided to slum it and have me on. Uh, and I'm so sorry because I was late as well because there was traffic. Because you're sat there patiently waiting for an hour whilst Peach is stuck in traffic. Well, you, no, but you were very good because you were there in, in your leathers soaking wet. You're and awesome. you're like, let's just do it now. Let's do it now. I've got to have uh, so traffic. <laughs> it was like, no, it was great. You were great. It just when lovely. the two of you meet, it rains a lot. Yes. <laughs> yes yeah. You know what? Yeah. yeah. I think that's right. Mm, there you maybe. go. We could, I was, yeah. was going to say, like, Peachy turned up today soaking wet. And I'm like, yeah. I get wet in leather when John's around. Well, this is true. I have this effect on you, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. It's like Paul of the Eldar all over again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The chocolate sauce. Chocolate sauce. Chocolate sauce. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, so when I left workshop, I, I sort of thought, well, again, in lockdown, you know, one of the things that happened in lockdown, everyone decided they wanted to do a podcast because it was something you can do on your own with a microphone in, in your room. Um, mm. But I had a thought, think about what I wanted to do and I, I what I'd learned being a commissioning editor and, and like I said, my favourite thing was always talking to people who had cool armies. Like mm -hmm. whether they were someone, uh, often someone would grab me in in the office and be, go over to Warhammer World because there's a guy in there who's got this incredible army, you've got to go and see it. And I'd go over and see it and be like, oh, this is beautiful and you've made all these things and you've converted every single piece on here and you've painted it beautifully. Would you like to write an article? And they'd always say yes because it's a, yeah. people want to talk about their work yeah. and it's great. And, and, I did that for those years and what I realised was everyone's got a nice story about where how the hobby came into their life and their journey through it and it 
my idea was just to essentially take the format of Desert Island Discs, hmm. like, and and turn it into about miniatures. Like, how did you start off? What was the first thing you you got into? What what made you walk into a games workshop for the first time? Or or, or didn't have to be a games workshop. It might be you, know, you got given an Airfix kit for Christmas, mm. which I mean, you can usually tell the age of someone. Actually, if it's like my age, it's usually Airfix yeah. for Christmas, and then younger people tends to be walked into a games workshop. Um, and then all the way through to something they can talk about that they've just finished painting, mm. and it was and it's just lovely hearing that story and what each of the miniatures that they pick out means to them and why they're proud of it and and how they paint it and yeah yeah it's just and it's been really nice and we've done 25 episodes um season three has been quite short um i might try and get another episode out before the end of the year but uh it was cut short because of the birth of my daughter so yes. um i've yeah. got other more important things to do the children be um, yeah <laughs> she uh, in fairness she's my favorite miniature ever so uh, <laughs> uh, she's way better than are you looking at now, later on into i don't know i think I, I think she's pretty she's pretty much uh mint and perfect as she is so um but yeah uh so, so no spider legs no okay. no spider legs on no her legs. um but yeah, so that's that's kind of this one a bit short. But next next year, hoping to get going again, and yeah, yeah we just sit down and talk for an hour. I mean, I'm quite, I feel quite lucky because when I do it, I do it over Zoom, and it's just I never put my face on screen, mm. so um, I don't have to worry about how I look, and uh, everyone else can just talk about it, and I don't have to edit that much because editing mm. uh, sound is hard enough. I yeah. certainly do not envy you for having to edit um, well, visu this, uh, visuals as I well. I mean, I've talked about it loads previously, but this is why I've got this little box, and now. I can edit as I go so nice. I'll be like oh cool yeah let's yeah. go to your close up actually Darth oh, Vader's chess stuff. piece it is, it is yeah. isn't it yeah, I thought good. you were going to say something else <laughs> cod piece yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we're going back to Kamara again aren't we? yeah um, <laughs> watch what happens when I take it up to four <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, where does that go where does, where does four go four's Jeff oh hey Jeff yeah, there yeah. you go yeah. that is four of course. and then two is you oh yeah mm. sorry about that sorry viewers at home yeah, yeah see my face for radio yeah. see that's why I should uh, yeah. be doing that as well just you know yeah. no face just but talking. no well not always um, <laughs> but oh, thanks <laughs> yeah um, no we uh, we've we've also uh, shared quite a few guests as well because I mean I've had people like um, Rich Gray has, has been yes, on um, yeah, yeah. we've had a few um Golden Demon winners and, and Slayer Sword winners and, and also just people from all over the hobby as well so it's um good spread yeah good spread it's yeah. been really nice and uh, and obviously I, I I always remember walking past your desk at work and you were when Warcry came out you just went so deep into it with your witch elves I did that, a bit um, too deep maybe well it was when you were doing the little library I brought this up on the podcast as well and you actually had the Warcry rule book <laughs> in did. the library of your and, little and I did a little board game of Warcry there you go <laughs> yes exactly and I was just always in awe of it and I was like yes Peachy is definitely and obviously I, I remember seeing a photo of you in a book at Games Workshop, a really old one, and it was, it was someone like John Blanche's birthday or something, and you'd gone to the the trip, the old trip to Jerusalem. Oh yes, yeah. And there's yeah. you and Duncan, and you yeah. look like you're teenagers. Yes, we were. And you're just teenagers, like <laughs> sipping half, half pint of cider, be like, ooh, they look happy. Between them with a straw. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's really actually sweet. baby sham. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's, uh, but yeah, so uh, you know, and so. Yeah, I like talking to everyone and, and all sorts about, you know, every, like I say, every, every single person's got a good story mm. and I like trying to help people tell it. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, picking you was pretty easy. You know, when I knew you'd left workshop, I was like, oh, I'll grab it's it. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was just, I feel like a bit of a vulture waiting outside Warhammer World, just being like, who's quick and say, oh yeah, you can oh, come on. Oh, we're the same. Yeah, yeah. Our ammo was well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, there's so many people that have got interesting stories. You're right. And, unfortunate moment you know there's so many still in workshop that you can't talk to because yeah. well it's not like it, but it, it's just, part of the contract that like, you can't really be talk, seen talking to externals unless it's like because we've done interviews in the past with other people um, when I've been in marketing but it has to go through so many yeah. like hoops and hurdles to make sure yeah, it's okay they're legit yeah. you, have to, you can't say these things you have to say this thing so I totally get it yeah. totally oh, no, it's but cool. when they've gone and they're free you can just like yeah let's talk mm. we're almost yeah. getting to the point where we're going to start forging resignation letters aren't we so we can get them <laughs> yeah. to the show yeah. <laughs> CC me in on those when you do that <laughs> yeah. well. what do you um, mean I resigned <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I'm on the paper face tomorrow <laughs> yeah I handed my notice in four months ago and I've been working for three for two <laughs> 
yeah no it's, it's yeah it's been really fun and I'm looking forward to next year like I say I might yeah. try and squeeze one more out yeah that's cool uh, yeah. Yeah, you've got to work around yeah. like bedtime and you're in yeah. bath time and stuff oh yeah I've got yeah. that tonight I've got a podcast uh, tonight as well which when this airs was last week mm. the week before um, but I'm like I've got to make sure I get Charlie and I changed and like we have to play Monopoly at least once in the morning before he goes to school and one before he goes oh, to wow. bed yeah. wow that's impressive because it's generally a game that hates families uh, yes. well it, it's Junior Monopoly and it's yeah. a role it's a theme park theme oh, um, right. and you buy little ticket booths and it's pocket money and stuff like that and he loves stealing well it doesn't steal my money but it's just <laughs> like uh, like daddy uh, you, you, you you know you've landed on this you have to pay me this I'm like yeah mm. yeah sure and then, then I get to Wiz and he, he's like oh, I have to pay you £10 I'm like just give me half, mate. Give me half. Then, mm. then he gives me half, and I'm like, cool, okay, we're, we're cool. Then I land on his, and he's like, give me full. <laughs> give me full, Dad. I'm like, it's not theft as much as like extra food. <laughs> yeah. Hang yeah. on a minute. I, just, I was just kind to you. you I, mean I remember, uh, remember reading an article about uh, a guy that commissions, uh, commissions uh, board games, and he says, and often when people would send in their, their idea for a board game, and they'd have their cover and letter, and they would say, this game could be the next or bigger than Monopoly. Mm. So there's that point where we just go, ah, in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you've mentioned Monopoly, I'm not making it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. 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 it is just a number version of Monopoly, right? More yeah, than well, it is because there's only so many ways you can do it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 No, I think, but, but playing Monopoly as a kid is good because it teaches you all about the cruelty of capitalism. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it gets it into your head that by, you know, I'm sure in a couple of years if you said, do you want to game Monopoly? But no, never again. No, you don't <laughs> want to do it. it. <laughs> he wants to upgrade to full Monopoly now because he's like, he's oh. understood that there's more money involved. Oh, there is. Yeah. Uh, and hotels and houses. Well, the new kits, you get like credit cards and stuff like that. What? It's like, yeah, it's, like, it's all gone digital. It's like, oh, let's just have a credit card. Oh, yeah, it was a digital bank that they have. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That sounds, well, I suppose it updates it, I yeah. guess. That's well, it stops the cheating. I mean, yeah. it's just to have so many 500 stuck up my sleeves and everything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's capitalism. You're meant to cheat. Yeah, it's yeah. encouraged. And you've got your offshore account. That exactly, you put yeah. Into. Which is, you, you know, that's when you take stuff in the bathroom and hide it in the system. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Get it out afterwards, yeah. Blimey, yeah. From here on the toilet, the toilet will be known as the Cayman Island. Someone once did that in Bugman's. Like, there was like a, not a, well, someone had got some information from the studios and put it into one of the toilets in Bugman's and then someone else would come and do the drop it was like so super like oh spy God. they, they yeah. got found out they got fired um, but this is like oh, I think the first year in the studio for me and it was like that's elaborate that's yeah. that is like and I think that was when Warseer was still a big thing uh, and it was yeah, like yeah. someone from Warseer was like paying someone to, mm, to get the information yeah. and then they put it in like a little baggie inside like the system uh, mm. and cubicle one which was the most horrendous cubicle yes, because it always was... had the unsinkables in it yeah uh, i hated it hate against the toilet there yeah Horrible. bugman's the old bugman's toilets were the worst they were the worst new the ones plumbing was considerably wrecked. better um oh uh, yeah no let's not yeah. talk about it. let's talk about patreon questions and cheese let's go <laughs> on to that okay that sounds far more yeah. entertaining mm, yeah i'll, I'll do so <laughs> unless there's anything else you want to cover before we move on to the patrons um i did well so i watched a recent video um, I think it's one that comes up before this potentially. Mm. Um, you said you had a bad experience with Blood Bowl. I did. That's yes. terrible. Yeah, was... and, and um, I, I have this sort of to, to prelude it because people are like you need to play Blood Bowl, and I've yeah. heard so much good stuff about it, and mm. like sevens and like Blitz Bowl all sound great. I, I I tend to nowadays collect stuff that I can use in other things. So if I yeah. do Warcry, I can use it in Age of Sigma. If I do Age yeah. of Sigma, I can use it in Warcry. If I do Forty K, I can use it in Kill Team and Necromunda, and vice versa. Mm. I don't do Astro. Um, I didn't do Aeronautica or Adeptus Titanicus because they were their own separate thing. I'm like, oh, I could just yeah. be painting more like Warcry Warbands. But with them being similar scales to like the new Epic stuff, it's like, well, actually, mm. that makes sense now to have like Astro... Um, I want to say Astro Time, Aeronautica, Adeptus Titanicus. I can play these games with all the stuff. Yeah. Whereas Blood Bowl really is like, it is its own thing, but I tend to use Blood Bowl kits to, to convert. You have their open hands, don't you? I've yeah, seen exactly. A lot of those, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. their open hands. Yeah. That's the best place to get open hands. If you ever need to convert and you need open mm. hands, Blood Bowl. All yeah. different scales. I, I, I was just going to say, if you, if it's Space Marines, you want the uh, the Grey Knights. I don't know where it's Oh, yes, because they do like their magic hand yeah, thing. Yeah, because yeah. they, the they, they have the guns on their own. Yes, yes they, they do. do. Yeah, 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 yeah I never thought about that. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I had one game, it was after a stock take, It, it was, we finished about six, mm. and normally our games would be like an hour, two hours. Mm. It was a Sunday night, I was at work the very next day, and we played Blood Bowl, we, we were doing a league, and the game was with someone that 
didn't really understand about communicating yes rules. i heard you speak this um yes. and it was dragging on and i would like oh i've got the ball cool i'm gonna move oh, i've dropped the ball that's yeah, so your turn's done now but what about all these guys are not moved you can't move in now that's it you're done yes. i'm like huh and yeah. it went on till 10 o'clock Mm. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to win. Of games of 40k. Yeah, I was like, mm. and I, I was, I'd like scored. I don't even think I've got a, a touchdown or whatever. And they were like on 13, 14. And I was like, I'm not going to win this. I'm just want to call. He's like, no, no, we need to finish it because I need because it's for the league, and I didn't want to make sure I get all my guys. I was yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. won. Just roll whatever you want. I, I'm going to bed because I'm yeah. working next morning. Just because you are not got nothing to do tomorrow. Yeah, I yeah. have work to do. And after that, I never touched blood bowl again because I and you know, the viewers will know this as well because they've heard me talk about it a few mm. times. It's like I should get over myself. Yes. And I've seen the new vampires. and yes. I love the new vampires. Well, not just the new vampires. First of all, I'm going to imagine was he playing dwarves by any chance? Uh, I don't. I think so. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I find dwarves <laughs> the most annoying teams to play against because they're incredibly tough and you, you can't beat them up. And yeah, I think I was the, using the, the box problem. set plastic humans. Oh yes, yeah. Um, and I, but also in any game, whether it's a board game or a, um, a tabletop game, mastering the teach is the most important thing. And yeah. if you teach someone badly, they'll have a bad time and they won't play it. Yeah. So you know, if you ever want a, another reintroduction to yes, Blood Bowl, yeah. I, it's one, one of it's Blood Bowl and Necromunda are my favourite games. Partly because I can paint a very small amount of miniatures to have a full game of it, um, and also uh, it's one of those games. And I imagine Warcry is a bit like this because yeah, I don't really yeah. play Warcry, but um, where you care about all of your yeah, characters, yeah. you give them names, you, oh, you you learn their personalities, and and when they get killed, it's actually heartbreaking. Yeah, and I, I know Pat's going to get very sad when Saloin gets killed. Oh, no. oh, he's never going to die. He will. Yeah. I'll make sure he dies. Mister Brisket will probably die. <laughs> Saloin is an mm. absolute badass. And yes, yeah. the jokey names as well. Yeah, That's jokey the, names. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I had a vampire team back in well a few years ago, and. Um, which I found out. I'm, I'm looking forward to the new vampires because I imagine uh, they're going to have very different rules. Because old vampires used to be the, like the most hard mode version of Blood Bowl. Oh, really? They're very hard to use and very hard to do anything with. Um, and but mine were called the the Hollywood Suckers or something because there was a place in the old world that was called something like or Holy Woods or something yeah. or somewhere near Sylvania anyway. Um, and so they were all named after the vampires. Had four of them, and they were named after actors who had played vampires in films and their film. So I had oh, yeah. Katerina von Unterwelt. Oh, right. Uh, uh, Wesley von Schaff. Um, all in German, of course, because you have to, it's, it's vampires. Um, <laughs> and I say, I, I, I'm like the anti-Captain America. I'm like, I didn't understand that reference. <laughs> <laughs> so Wesley from, uh, Wesley Sachs played uh, uh, oh, Catherine, right. uh, no, what's her name? Kate Beckinsale from Underworld. Yeah. Um, and all the Thralls were named after food. Oh, nice. I had like Biff Bergignon. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what Thralls are. They just get et. And, uh, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, if you've got a sense of humour, it's one of the best games. And yeah. get someone to teach properly. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, I think we will have to do a game anyway for the channel at some point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there'll be some uh, teams being painted. Good. Uh, virus. And I've got two teams up. The current one I do like is the Athel Lauren Avengers, which will probably be like mm. the worst ones to play with because they're like elves. But I just like them, and that's what I should always go with. Go, go with the things I like and see how I get on. Yeah. Um, but I do like the new uh, vampires. Vampires. Well, great. well it, again, with every team, they've got a strength. Yeah. And that's what's nice. Some of the older versions of Blood Bowl, some teams like the vampires, you just had to be insanely good at the game of Blood Bowl to get anything out of them. Yeah. Um, I see. I tried to do a revamp of a revamp uh, hey, uh, uh, during the studio. They were like, doing, "Dad's look was doing a campaign," and oh, I just yeah. never got around to painting the warband. And I was no. doing uh, vampires because I called mm. them the Sylvanian families. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah. And I was just like, "Oh, I need to do this." Never got around to doing it. And then the camp, the the league never happened. Yeah. So I'm glad because I would have had another occasion of it being horrific. Mm. And then I'm like, "No, this game is naff." Yeah, <laughs> that's why they have a league called naff. <laughs> well, exactly. Yes, um, but yes, I, I recently had to stop playing in league, which I, I really miss. But again, just because of daughter and yeah. Um, yeah. not having the time. Have, to have a game. Yes, uh, I, I had the uh, my Norse team, the Fjord Mustangs, the Fjord, Fjord Mustangs, oh, they were called. <laughs> um, so they all had name like Fjalken, and uh, I just put a J in the name of Ford's cars. And, oh, um, I just love it. Capri. They were, uh, it was uh, Capri or something like yes, and but they were in the Ford racing colours as well. Nice. So, yeah. oh. Awesome, oh, amazing! Yeah. But just it's so funny. Yeah. You just have fun with it. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I, I love doing yeah. like 
themed mm. stuff yeah that's a bit yeah. silly i think that's my it does bother favorite. some people on the internet which I, is yeah. why you should lean into it more yeah do it more though yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and i i can understand like because yeah to a certain extent i do something silly and and then i'm like oh i feel like i'm not taking it seriously or i'm like maybe disrespecting it a little bit a bunch of grown men rolling dice and moving toy soldiers around and we should be serious well well yeah, no, like, and, <laughs> yes. and, I, and i never will be yeah. and and it's like oh look i stuck some wings on a dreadnought yeah. like you know that's that's a bit silly isn't it yeah. but um be silly more people should be silly yeah yeah it's fun, it's it's fun. light-hearted and fun yeah yeah, yeah. So, absolutely yeah yeah that's wonderful so we do have some patreon questions oh cool uh which is lovely um and uh, well, the first one, which I think we sort of covered, was uh, whether certain metrics someone had to hit for their work to. F- oh, okay. So no, this isn't influencers actually. So mm. um, was there a certain metric someone had to hit for their work to feature? Um, and how do you uh, figure them out? So if, but I like, I guess you said you wandered over to Buckman's and you were like, yeah. "Are we please?" Well, yeah. Or well, sometimes I just I was lucky. I got to spend uh, you know every morning a few minutes on like Instagram and Facebook and just scroll through and. Just try mm-hmm. and find something cool. And I actually have people still on my Instagram to this day that I'm sort of like, I really hope they finish that army one day because I'd love to talk to them about it on my mm. podcast now. But I started following them when I wanted them to finish it um, when I was working there. But yeah, it was it was either find them, someone would tell me about something in Warhammer World, I'd stroll across, or they'd email it in to the community inbox. Um, or I'd just spot them on Instagram and just drop them a message saying like, hey, fancy doing an article for Warhammer Community? And um, mm. like I said, most of the time they said yes. And it was always great when you found like the real gems and, and there were no sort of, it didn't have to be the most famous army. In fact, it was kind of better if no one had seen it before mm. or if it was, not that no one had seen it, but um, it came from slightly smaller accounts because you were sort of shedding a spotlight on something new and interesting. I remember there was a guy... He did a Space Sharks army, and it was very specifically Space Sharks, not Carcaridon. Mm. Um, and he had to paint them in a very specific way. It was beautiful grey army. Um, he had to paint them in a specific, specific way because he was a jazz drummer, and I think he had carpal tunnel and had sort of quite damaged his nerves in his arms mm. and had developed a way of painting them oh, wow. that allowed him to paint them quickly and easily and not hurt himself doing it. And they looked stunning. And so being at that sort of angle as well, bring that into it, mm-hmm. was, was exceptional. Yeah. It was, yeah, so we had we had great contributors and it's you just found them where you could find yeah. them. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, Faces and Bases says, oh, what a great guest. Uh, the walk on community engagement has been great in uh, recent years. Long may it continue. I'm sure there will be a few questions about the influencer metrics for articles and review products. Uh, but do you have any insight into why these requirements aren't openly advertised? Uh, I, officially, no. I think someone th- might be a knob. Well, kind <laughs> of. I mean, you did get in in lots of stuff. You'd often get people sort of lobbying um, for themselves, or mm. you know, would say, you know, if they had a a, a smaller channel, would tell everyone to email Warhammer community and, and that's uh, that's fine in a way I mean let us know that you're out there but um, sometimes the emails would be like oh you're all idiots if you don't give this guy a free stuff and it's like yeah. oh, what hang on and, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think not advertising the specific numbers uh, out loud and like I say I, I don't know what they are now I have mm. it will have changed absolutely since I was there um, and it may not even be fully based on numbers anymore. It might be more, like I was saying, if specific game systems have smaller viewing yeah. figures anyway, they'll yeah. it'll, it'll all be different. That but it's just a case of you don't want people to agonise. And, and you don't want people who are over that threshold to think that that's the only rule to get them in. Because it might yeah. have been... Because there are people out there who, you know, for sometimes good reasons, sometimes bad reasons, are incredibly negative about the hobby and would mm. then feel... Or, and specifically the Games Workshop hobby, would then feel sort of like, oh, well, I've got enough people, so I should be able to get free stuff. Why aren't yeah. you sending it to me? And would then do a load of videos ranting about it and saying, well, I've got, I meet the requirements, so why not? Yeah. And it's like, well, the other requirements is you're not a dick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's kind of a big rule in the yeah. hobby in general, but... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Wonderful. Um, Chris says, Zotes, enjoy your podcast and look oh, forward God. to Zotes. <laughs> I forgot all about yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. I almost, do you know what? I almost wore that shirt today because I just, I pretty much only wear check shirts and I, I almost put that one on this morning. Yeah. Um, I, went, I went through a plaid shirt phase. Yeah. 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 Well, we will do again this winter with the thought. We yes. went through a stage. Mm. All of us were in check shirts on every video. For <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But yes, Zotes, good old Zotes. 
um, I still every now and again someone comes up to me and says it in the live world yeah yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so and their question is: do, 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 While Warcom has developed as a regular hobby feed, uh, aside from the growth in using community member images for new releases, do you think it strikes the right balance between the community angle and a sales tool? Oh, it's, it, does it strike the right balance? Not always, but do you know what? It's you know, Games Workshop is a business. It's quite a unique business as well, in a way. You have to think of it as this is effectively a cottage industry that someone is a global brand leader in. Yeah. Which doesn't, they shouldn't fit, it's, but mm. it, it does. And and you have to get a lot of information out there. And I remember it, there was sometimes a frustration of, you know, I'd get someone to write an article and I'd tell them, hey, it's going to come out on Thursday. And then it might have been a leak or it might have been a big change or, you know, it was always fun when you got things like forgeable price changes because oh great that's going to be three articles mo- you know to stop people moaning about that yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're right to moan again I, yeah. but when you're on the inside it's like and that would bump your article out of the way because it's the least important information in terms of what needs to be said mm. but it's also the best advert for the hobby I always used to be quietly smug whenever I, I worked on an article with a a painter who'd done a brilliant army. Every time it went onto Facebook, it always got the most likes mm. of everything else that anyone else was done. And and all the other stuff was great, but it was always like me trying to point and be like, "Yeah, do more." Yeah, um, but yeah. Oh, it's it's like yeah, you know, they say like the price rise thing just gets lots of thumbs down, lots of angry faces, lots of negative comments, and it's still like for the algorithm, right? It's still like interactions and stuff. But but people just <coughs> want to see cool toys. People want to see how someone's taken like an army that they like, and now they've changed mm-hmm. it and done something different to it. Whether that's like basing, whether that's like yeah. conversions and stuff. So nine times out of ten, you're right. It's always going to be like the hobby wins out. <coughs> um, but yeah, people need that space to have a bit of a mm-hmm. rant and a rave as well. Yeah, Don't of course. Die on I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or die quietly if you. I really went down the wrong way. <laughs> um, yeah, it's and yeah, and also it's a capacity thing. It's you've mm-hmm. only got so many editors, so many writers so much uh, so Jeez, many hours and, no it should be <coughs> swig some mind brew the army shots always did really really well and but it, it is a case that there are only so many hours in a day there are only so many editors and writers who mm. can support it and you do have to get that key information out that it is a it, it's, it's a way of talking to the Warhammer community whereas it's also a way of encouraging community interaction and, yeah. and participation and it, so it's just the balance until you've got 20 editors and, yeah. um, you know, I, I do, you do think 30 that articles a day, it'll always be tricky. That side didn't have enough staff. I think, like, from, like, no. the, the writers for the articles and, like, the guys on the social media, mm. and do, even to this day, I think it's undermanned with the amount of demand that's on, like... Probably. In, with some videos, they, they've opened comments now on Facebook, and that I, 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 certainly when I was there, you'd have, like, a Facebook guy that was, like, Age of Sigma, a Facebook guy that was predominantly 40k, someone that was, like, Specialist Games, yeah. Forge World, and then there was, there was just checking, like, Twitter and Instagram in their own time when they could. But that's why comments were turned off for YouTube, because someone's yeah. got to police it. Because yeah, there's going to be... I mean, we get it. You know, you get, like, comments that just people just want to say mean things because it makes them feel better. Yeah. And other times there's, like, great interactions. You're like, oh, that's a really nice thing. Let's think mm-hmm. about that. Let's try, explain why we've done that. Yeah. Um, but no one can man that because mm. it was just so under understaffed. So again, it's that it's that global brand cottage industry. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, they games worship is the two things at the same time. Yeah, it doesn't you know, enthusiasm and the can do attitude will put bread on the table as opposed to. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> You're doing it because for the love of the hobby. I'm yeah. doing it because I need to be paid. So yeah. I pay yeah. mortgage. Thanks. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Any questions about cheese, by the way? Uh, none yet. Oh, um, disappointed. Um, someone, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pronounce this really, really slowly to make sure I get it correctly. Someone named Hick Dead. Hick Dead instead mm. of. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your favourite toe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yes, nice, <laughs> excellent answer. Yeah. Uh, Spence painting uh, has said John is a lovely boat. Question for him: Were there any? Uh, Influence, uh, influences or artists that he didn't get to work with during his time at GW that he wished he had? Uh, well, Spence, for a start. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yes, no, Spence has been a guest on uh, My Life in Miniatures as well. Uh, he was excellent and, and lovely to have there. Um, uh, were there any... 
Yeah, there were probably... So when we, we had a list of people who would send really impressive miniatures out to paint. Um, and when I started doing that, the brief was Gone Demon Winners, mm. Slayer Sword Winners. That was who we sent it to, which was great. And, you know, but it was quite a, a limited pool. And it was actually when I left or just so I was leaving, that was changing slightly and it, it became more, let's get people who have got good followings and do are doing interesting things. Mm. It didn't have to be top, brilliant, perfect stuff. So and it ends up with the likes of Pete, Pete the War Game. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You give something to Pete and you'll come, you'll come back with something that isn't remotely the thing you gave him. Yeah. yeah. But also, surely, that, um, and this is just from my point of view, seeing like those people and how they interact with their work and their craft, it takes them a long time to get things done. So your, oh, yeah, your return too. on that's going to be... It diminishes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, send that out to this guy, send that to that guy. When 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 can you get it done? Next year? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, some people. <laughs> absolutely. And, and um, yeah, and so it was, close to the end, it was really nice to... Um, see more different people mm. um, getting a chance to get their hands on those kits early and do different things with them. I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and again, I'm probably like being a dead horse about this, but it, it, it's one of my biggest um, bugbears with, with workshops, certainly when I was in the studio, is there was a lot of focus on match play and a lot of focus on high-end paint guides. Yeah. Um, and that distorts what the reality of the hobby is. Yeah. Because not everyone, I'd say like a, a, a percentage certainly do match play in tournaments and mm -hmm. a percentage certainly do uh, exhibition painting but I'd say 80 plus percent don't do that no so then what you're doing is you're distorting and then people get sort of frustrated and annoyed going I can't paint to that level I can't paint to that level no. I can't do that and they're showing all these things um, so it's good I think well, that it shows the broad spectrum of what people do and can achieve it's real yeah and, and one thing that I, I don't think a workshop has ever ever gotten right and they are starting to address it a little bit I think but it's that difference between um, again, using digital marketing to th ideas, you have um, the stuff you want someone to buy now and the thing you want someone to aspire to. Mm. In the same way, you you can you need to be able to give people the opportunity to be able to get an army on the battlefield really quickly, and that's what's great about things like contrast paint and um, dry brushing and all that sort of stuff. Brilliant. But you also do want to be able to say to them, hey, if you do want to kick on and and do, you know, here's yeah. what. Um, wet blending is, is yeah. you know this is how you start off doing OSL is, yeah. you know and I don't think because if, if you talk to a lot of um, well the you know people who are winning Golden Demons they sort of think there isn't anything for them coming out of workshop either yeah, sometimes yeah, so, you know and, yeah. or there's very lean periods it needs, it needs it all I think yeah and it, and it fails and to it, do that <laughs> well again it, it had, you, you can't be all things to all people can you no, so, no that's, that's true yeah. no, we can't certainly I definitely can't <laughs> no. No. no I'll be the first mm. uh, no I won't uh, uh, Phil asks what's your most memorable in game oh wow slash oh no moment oh most memorable oh wow or oh no um most annoying moment I ever had in a game was I was in doing a tale of four warlords for the Horus Heresy mm. uh, uh, for Warhammer TV, and I'd spent I'd forgotten what date the game was on, mm. and someone reminded me that it's tomorrow, and I had a Sakar and Scorpius, I something it is. It's the one with the, the Sakar and tank with a missile launcher that can shoot up, um, and I hadn't painted it. And I stayed up until three o'clock that morning, mm. painted it, put it on the battlefield, you know, staying late after work, so already quite tired. Put it on the battlefield, one-shotted, first turn of the game, pretty surprised. much the first action That's of the game. Surprised. It's just like, <laughs> oh, okay, that was my, that was probably my biggest oh no. Yeah. Um, best oh wow was um, finding out that an army that I, an Eldar army I'd built in sixth edition and... Um, I was playing a friend who I played quite regularly and he brought his relatively good Imperial Guard Space Marines army and he's like, yeah, well, let's have a game. Let's try your Eldar out. And I was like, I don't think it's very good. It's probably rubbish. And uh, it, I only had to add a single Warlock and this was in 8th edition, maybe. Mm. Single Warlock and it got it back up to 2,000 points. Um, it turned out to be the most rancid, wonderfully rancid <laughs> army I've ever had, ever. And it was just one game, I was like, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> seeing Karandras walk up to Vulcanistan and just rip him in half in one go. It's like, yes, this is, I like this. This is, oh, wow. I, I'm very fond of this. Or the Warp Hunter just one-shotting a Laman Russ from 
on the other side of a building that it couldn't even see. And that was through like, look, not skill, right? Oh, yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yes. I'm, I'm an all right player. Yeah. I'm, I often refer to myself as like the, the monkeys that write the work, works of Shakespeare. Eventually, it's going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah, no, that's, that's me. No, I'm yeah. not saying that's you. That's definitely. No, no, it's probably me as well. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Skinny Man uh, says, in the more pessimistic camp of hobbyists, uh, there is an opinion that GW doesn't care about the opinions of the community. Uh, can you think of any situation where G-Dubs t- took on board some feedback slash potential outcry and maybe uh, walked back on a decision that didn't go down too well at the time? I don't know about walking back on decisions. It was pretty much... So I remember it's like once it's done, it's done, and that's um, how it's going to go. But uh, in terms of taking things on board, it was always taken on board. It was just again, often hands could be quite tied in certain situations, and you know, you can't change models, you know, that have been in production for three years or anything like that. Yeah. So, uh, or prices are linked to. You know, people's stock dividends and all that sort of stuff. So you can't really do much about that. And I think, I suppose one of the, do you know what? Actually, there is a really nice example of it. And I, oh, I, I was thought, I thought about this the other day because it was. Um, do you, I remember the young boy who was a fan of the Space Wolves. I think his name was Bryn, and um, everyone he, he rather tragically, I think, passed away very, very young, and the community were crying out for him to be put into something um, with the Space Wolves because they were his favourite. And in one of the codexes, I think maybe seventh edition codex, there was a little paragraph in the corner about Captain Bryn of the Space Wolves going off into the sunset or something like that. And it was yeah. really poignant and yeah. beautiful yeah. and really nice. And that was an example of the studio, not well, the community, but the, the publication studio yeah. taking that on board and saying like, because the community had said, come on, it, this is, yeah. you know, yeah. it's heartbreaking enough anyway. And, and they'd taken it on and did it and the reason I was actually thinking about it is that was one of the few times that when I was working there that we got some real props and I say we loose this week I had absolutely nothing to do with that um, but as a company got sort of really great feedback and then about six hours later there was a Forge World price increase and it was like we couldn't have a day couldn't uh, have a day where we were yeah, good guys could we day, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was really annoying that but that that was such a sweet Touching, yeah. touching yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. I was thinking yeah. from, um, um, obviously, yeah, nothing's going to uh, beat that story, mm. but um, certainly the, the way they handled Sisters of Battle, I think, was oh, yeah. quite a nice um, way, almost like a treat for the, for the community, because for, for many years, products would get made in, in the shadows, in, in workshop, no one would see it, mm. um, whereas Sisters of Battle was one of those ones where they showed most of the progression across mm. the year, but in a mm. way that was like what I experienced every day as an army painter was you see all this cool stuff you can't touch it you don't even got the resins at this point you get excited about it then you finally get the resins yeah. like we do we paint some of it we then can't touch it again for like months because it's been video photographed and stuff mm. like that um, so it was nice to see how people were like that's really cool I, want it. I can't touch it for a year or yeah. two but it was nice as a treat to go we're going to show you the whole process of yeah of this and no no real leaks happened with Sister Battle no. which was interesting yeah and it, and, and that was the purpose that was the test and, and Sisters were sort of seen as a I, I don't know about a free hit but like a, you know obviously we need them to be a success but mm. we don't expect them to maybe be the success that they ended up yeah. being um, but that was all part of a test to see what if we do promote something right from the design yeah. stage yeah. all the way through and that, that's probably the reason why you get the old world articles that you get now yeah, yeah. you know it's yeah. showing you something you're not going to get your hands I, on it for some time I, so. I certainly feel they should do that more because it, there was always this weird sort of belief that if you showed stuff too much people wouldn't pay and buy because they were holding mm. their money for that thing <clears throat> oh okay. yeah. um so like with like in retail you want sh- you'd show like so many months ahead and then so many months ahead after that mm. you know because you have like this rolling schedule of what you'd show mm. um and it's like oh you can't talk about that because people won't want to you know buy this mm. thing or this thing they're going to save that money for that but like are you sure i mean mm. do, do you know everyone's personal circumstances and their drives and this that and the other and the Sister Battle was a great example because it did really well when yeah. it came out, so yeah. it didn't stop anyone. See, and the other problem being as well, isn't it, and, and I know you've talked about it before, is that thing of don't tell them we're replace, replacing that thing with a new one. And mm. I was thinking, so I get that in some ways because you've got to try and move stock, but at the same point in time, I think 
it creates really, really bad blood if you've gone out and bought, yeah. say, a, you know, a whatever, a rhino, and then two weeks later, yeah. another rhino comes out and it's better than the one that you bought, and, you think, and two weeks ago, and no one could have told me this, you know, and it's yeah. that. But then, it's it, that thing, isn't it? I also think if you're told that, people yeah. might, there's a lot of people that like that rhino, and they'll be like, I need that yeah, rhino before that, yeah. it goes, yeah. because I only found out about the Free Guild Pistoliers after Are they gone. After they're gone. Mm. Yeah. And I've got enough, but I kind of wanted a few more. Yeah. Uh, and it's a bit too late for me now. So mm. I'm like, but they will come back with Old World. But knowing that, because nothing's really replacing them as such, and even if there was, I'd be like, while well, I like those heads for that faction that I use them for, mm. they're cool. I'll just get them when they come out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that it's, it's almost projecting one person's way of purchasing onto an entire community yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't think that's the best way to no. to do it no Whereas, I, yeah. I thought one other example of where feedback has been listened to quite well which was uh, near the time at the end of my time at Games Workshop um, just about pre-pandemic uh, I started looking after Golden Demon mm. a bit and one of the reasons I, I started doing that was because we got a lot of feedback from a lot of the people who end Skull and Demon that, you know, you have here one of the most prestigious, what could be the most prestigious painting competition in, in miniatures, was not good enough in some places. Hmm. Um, I remember the first time I worked at Warhammer Fest, the awards presentation was stuck in the corner of a little room. The projector froze on the third slide. Oh, great. No. And the Slayer Sword, the the... Supposedly the grand prize was brought to the stage, zip tied to a bit of cardboard, which was snipped off in front of everyone who was trying to win it. And because it was that cheap, I think they cost three quid or whatever, the Chinese pressed Slayer Swords that they give out now. <sighs> I was like, well, well, how do you think this is good enough? So I lobbied to try and do some more with it. And um, thankfully that everyone was quite receptive. The, the argument often was, and I get this from a, business perspective golden demon doesn't make money mm. and it's true you can't put a cash figure you don't have to pay to enter golden demon you can't put a cash figure on what golden demon generates but just walk around the cabinets yeah. so how much money has been spent on that you do have to pay to for golden Demon because you have to, you get, have to get buy a ticket, ticket yes well, and then you have to right, pay yes. for a model yeah and all the, pro- yeah. the, the materials that are invested but, in that so. and also those some of those models how many i saw um when um the guy recently won it in the states with the, the skink Hmm. And everyone's like, well, it's just a skink. Like, it's, well, what's so impressive about that? It's like, it's flawless. He's painted yeah. it absolutely yeah. flawlessly. Go, oh, I can do that. So they all went off and bought skinks. Right? So they're all trying to do exactly what he did. And it's like, that's just generated so much sale. I mean, yeah. all right, probably not an enormous amount. Yeah. But yeah. combine that with, like you say, everything that's in the cabinet, the ticket pr- yeah. sales that they did, all of that. And so I did manage to convince them, let's put a bit more effort into it. And since then, like the new trophy got released, mm. um, the setup has looked a little bit better at, at each of the events, and yeah, it's sort of going along nice. And so, but a lot of that came from hearing those painters who winning it being like, "Yeah, the sword's rubbish, and mm. we're really, yeah. you know, we're just in the corner of a room with a broken projector." Because it used to be a proper sword made them, and they can make them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a Richard Gray, yeah. Richard yeah. Gray was talking about it. Yeah, the one if you go to Warhammer World now, and they've got the honors board for the Slayer Sword winners in the on the stairs in the exhibition area. That's the sword that was the legendary. What are they Raven Raven Forge? I think they're called the really people who made yeah, that yeah. sword. And but I even looked into getting a, a new well, sword made. It was all the pomp and ceremony for um, the awards because, like at the NEC and even the NIA. It's mm. like there was a whole load of seating area and yeah. there was all the like tables and stuff but there was always the stand there at the very end of the day you couldn't go until mm. like it would finish because like you you know the doors weren't open that's when all the Golden Demon winners would come on and everyone mm. sat down watching so you've got like all the eyes of everyone in the yeah. event watching the awards ceremony. some mm. people might be walking around and dealing with like a cryy kid or like, yeah, yeah. a grumpy teenager or whatever mm. but for the most part all the eyes are on the stage it's not rammed into a corner yeah. and it is like the high end sword that you have to wear yeah. a chainmail glove because it might slide yes, your hand. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It used to be so prestigious, and then yeah. it just turned into like. Oh, yeah, it was an afterthought, well, and now it's getting prestigious, which yeah. is great. It's, it's well, really when, nice we, to when we launch our own, and we've got a Slayer butter knife. Yeah, yeah. Highest standards possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was hoping for like the open competition. We have like a, a, a jammy dodger as bronze, silver, and gold. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Right. Yeah, love it. But we use like bronze, silver, and gold decorator paint. 
Yeah. So you can actually eat it as yeah. well. Well, absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gin, gin I, I won. I won a. I won a bronze jammy dodge, but I didn't make it home. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the plaque <laughs> and some crumbs. Yeah, uh, and the bronze and the plaque solid gold. Yeah, yeah. Um, lovely. Uh, this one, I don't want to put you on the spot. You absolutely don't have to All answer right. it, and you can just raise Ooh. your eyebrows. Um, there, uh, there is an influencer list. Is there at Warhammer Community a blacklist of people that you, you don't work with uh yes but it's very tiny well when i was there yes it was very tiny and i, I won't say who's on it or yeah. anything about that because no, yeah. i don't want to know who i am i don't but i don't know if that's still a mm. thing or not but mm. yeah mm. there's yeah i had rumblings but i don't want to yeah name any names no when i was there it was absolutely it was really only I think two people and you can probably guess the sort of people they are so. mm. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, wonderful uh, and then someone has asked uh, what's your favourite aspect of the hobby painting converting playing or the social side of it or something more esoteric I like that word <laughs> I suppose so uh, painting and converting I mean, it's especially for Necromunda which are my absolute favourites um, because you can just you've got so much s- s- scope of imagination mm. um, every model is a Necromunda model exactly John. every model is a Necromunda model I'm, I'm currently pretty much working my way through the Curse City box just being like yep mm. how do we chop that up and do do something with that but um, yeah it's that's a huge part for me I don't think I've got it in me to paint an army again I've, I, mm. I can't do it anymore I've, 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 I've saved up an entire Space Marine Army for my Blood Angels that I'm probably never going to do well when I retire or something mm. Mm. Um, but yeah it's, it's a combination probably with the painting and converting small scale things Necromunda Warbands Blood Bowl and again talking to people about their life and the hobby and, and what they love and what they enjoy and how they found it and, and what it means to them that's I think the the nicest part about um, having my podcast is just you know you meet lovely people you talk to them about what the hobby means to them and, and sometimes it can be quite poignant and sometimes it can be really funny mm. and it's a great combination and that's my favourite stuff nice. yeah. awesome nice. Yeah. perfect then one final question from Adam yeah. um, oh no no there was another one that I wanted as well sorry so yeah. uh, Alex uh, obviously new model launches would be a big hit but are there any Warcom Warcom specific articles or types of content that outperformed viewership expectations I think it was just, uh, I don't know if I outperformed the expectations because I always expected them to do really, really well, which was the when we had someone who'd created a great army and, and just getting photos of it on there. Um, mm. I think I always remember uh, Saini Ndier, who's, uh, that's, I've probably absolutely ruined his name there, uh, a French painter who, first he did a certain article that was Carcaradon's, he'd done this brilliant, all very heavily tribal-inspired Carcaradon army. There were, we did quite a few Carcaradons, because I know I just mm. mentioned the Space Shark army as well. Um, but then he came back and he did this brilliant article about, um, <clears throat> he'd created a, a whole planet, effectively, uh, and all the inhabitants of it who were an imperial planet based on his own uh, West African heritage and painted them using the colours of um, that were associated with his family and uh, tribal stuff from West Africa and conversing with it and that performed so so well and the reception that got was so pleasing to see and just everyone being like wow this is amazing because it mm. did it highlighted that you know if you everyone's got a different story to tell and the more different voices you get in the hobby the better because you yeah. get you get more inspiration, you get more new ideas coming from everywhere. And, and I guess even from like a painter's point of view, it's something really unique and new that you would yeah. never have like connected with. Cause, exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, you take like the car carriages, like tribal shark esque yeah. kind of like motifs and stuff. Whereas yeah. like, you get like West Africa is like all sorts of like interesting like colours and designs yeah, yeah, yeah. and like scarification and Absolutely. tattoos. And yeah, stuff. yeah. It was it was it was a it was such a good article to read, mm. and it was it was great to work with them on. But yeah, it's, it's that one really performed really really well and it was so nice to see because it was just you know people mm. were suddenly inspired to i was inspired because i thought about my scottish roots and i was like mm. what can I do that and i then <clears throat> i then tried to paint tartan no oh, yeah i'm never doing that ever again yeah. in my life yeah it's, I, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's horrible easy. i was literally just thinking uh, as you were going through that story um i uh 
I wore a tie recently because my son was Taylor, and that's the Taylor Tartan. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, I wonder if I could like get that on a Marine somehow or something Dang. like that. <laughs> it's not I, worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think some of it is artistic license because I have a, a regiment of the Black Watch and the oh, yeah. 92nd Gordon Highlanders. Mm. Um, and I looked at the Tartan, mm. squinted, and went, they're the colours I need, yes. which is like blue green and a bit of yellow and yeah. then it was the same for like the black watch was like blue dark green a yeah. bit of red yeah. uh, so I didn't sit there doing all these like really mm. intricate well, cross hatches just like blue some broad green bits and then some nice fine little red mm. bits and from a distance when you've got like, like what 30, 40 red coats yeah. with like the banners it's, like, do. it's black watch isn't it it's yeah. got the black watch kilts and I was, mm. I was like that when I um when I played uh, Ariadne for Infinity, mm. they had they had uh, tartan in it mm. because there was some like kilt wearers in it, and um, and I was remember moaning to a friend of mine that I was trying to paint it and doing a very bad job of it, and he said he says you don't paint tartan, he says you suggest tartan. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that's thought, good. And, worst, you know, yeah. and it and and that's what I did. I stripped it all the way back and I just put the. Yeah. Just, yeah. I almost just painted just slightly different coloured cubes, almost, yeah, and yeah. Then just little. Ha- points of dots around them and he went you suggest it he said because mm. it's going to be four foot away yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah no that's a good yeah. point unless yeah. you are doing a display piece miniature then mm. you know, I, I think you suggest it don't try and paint it yeah. Yeah. if in, on your work experience you just go and get tartan paint yeah yeah absolutely, yeah. Right. Tartan absolutely. Paint, of course yeah. yes we do stop that yeah. Here in the mm. painting phase, yeah, <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we, that, that we should just sell it and rainbow yeah. paint as well. Oh no, yeah. Louise stocks rainbow paint. You might want to check yes. the links out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we could so we could also sell camouflage paint. We do, yeah. yeah. Mm. Just, just still can't find it, can we? No, no, been no. looking for weeks. Yeah, it's around <laughs> somewhere. somewhere yeah. <laughs> I think we put it over there. Well, we'll find it. Probably. Uh, I think one last question before we all melt. Um, from Adam, it says uh, you have a Titan battle robot, and the three members of the painting face team of the crew. You must assign them uh, a the cockpit, like one in each. So someone has a cockpit. He can only see things and communicate to the other two. Uh, B arms and weapons. C the legs and movement system. Who are you putting where and why? Oh God! <laughs> I've got the spot. I'm awful at communicating, so don't stick me in the yeah, cockpit. Know, uh, as much as I like so, the same yeah. cockpit, uh, don't mm-hmm. stick me in it. Um, I don't. Um, well, you can be you. You can be weapons because um, I mean Jeff's ex army. So <laughs> Jeff's weapons. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means we're going to make you the legs. I mean, Will you weave a motorbike about to me? Yeah. You are the best. I mean, I'd walk like five hundred miles. Yeah, right, right. More, right. You're the legs. Congratulations, Pat. You are the head. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. You do all, all the brain work here anyway. Yeah. I can see that. Make so, sense. Yeah. And then, then what we'll do is we'll just stick a beard to the front of the Titan as well. Oh, yeah, put yeah. some glasses on it, mm, and then it can be Jeff and Pat. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I like it in the comic version of us. The difference is just the colour of the hair. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. It's kind of like quiff, beard, glasses. We'll make Pat more Well, gentle. I talked to that time yeah. when I, I I was meeting you for lunch and I got there first. I said to the, 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 oh, the yeah. waitress, I said, uh, she said, you want, would you like a menu? So I'm waiting for a friend of mine. She went, mm-hmm. oh, right. I said, like this, I said, but slightly different hair court and a bit shorter. She went, oh, okay. And then she's yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, she just took me straight. Like, How did she know who I was? <laughs> well, genuinely, when um, uh, people were coming to Warhammer, like influencers who were, had never met me before, and they were coming to Warhammer, like, oh, it'd be great to meet up and have a chat. I'd be like, great, I'll meet you in Bugman's. And I'd always say to them, I'll be the hairy guy, <clears throat> hairy guy, big beard, check shirt. Walk into Bugman's like, oh, I needed to be more specific than that. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, and then there's this poor person wandering around fire table going, Are you John? No, okay. I yeah. literally had that. Uh, one day um, in, in the studio, uh, it was uh, Warmer TV, um, and someone said, Oh, there's a guy in. in uh, uh, it was, um, yeah, Warmer would have emailed me, said, There's a guy walking around who's a big fan of, of Warmer TV paint guides. Could you send one of you guys over just to say hello? And I was like, Yeah, yeah. I'm free. I'm, uh, the other guys are currently filming. So I went over and I, I, I saw the guy and he was like, uh, what does he look like? He's like, oh, he's, he's, he's in there, he's got dark hair and he's with his girlfriend um, and she's got dark hair. And I was like, okay, um, any, anything else? You know, like glasses, coloured shirt? I was like, uh, black. I was like, okay, cool. I went up there. There was about three couples that fit that description. I was mm-hmm. like, oh. Talked to all three of them. And I was like, is anyone John? <laughs> was, oh, hi, it's me. I was like, cool. I, mean, no, I, I, yeah. I don't think his name was John. I was just no, no, yeah, yeah. Namesake here. But I was like, oh, God, this is... 
<sighs> why is this? Th- why is this happening now? Why is it three identical couples? <laughs> but yeah, we, we found him in the end. Yeah. Fantastic, lovely. That's all my uh, all my questions. Yes, I'm well, ask. thank you, John. Thank you for bringing us some uh, biscuits as well uh, mm. from. Uh, what was the place again in Nottingham? Uh, so there's a, a international supermarket called uh, Murat, which is by Senta Market, and they buy, have lots of Turkish and German and all sorts of biscuits we that got, are a bit we different. Got a selection. I uh, can't wait to try them. They, they look a lot like like custard creams or Jaffers. But those are banana. But not oh, even better. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. Do you what, know the nice thing about the foreign biscuits as well? They don't generally, generally don't tell you how bad they are for you. No, they don't. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. I've not yeah. seen any information, so yeah. 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 No traffic they feel lights. Free. On them. If there is no Calorie traffic free. light, if there's no traffic lights on them, it means they're neutral foods and they won't be bad for you at all. Honestly. Exactly. That's yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, most of it is banana, so I'm, I'm all good with that. There you go. Who doesn't like banana? Thank you, John. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I hope to hear about season three for My Life in Miniatures. Mm -hmm. Check John's Instagram out as well, and also for some awesome converted miniatures, which we didn't get around to talking about. No, no. Or at least sharing them, but that's less editing for Pat. Yeah. Uh, I've written written a time code in to put some pictures of Necromunda models over. Okay, uh, cool. All right, all right. Are they on your... Yeah, Yeah. I'll I'll send you a couple. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. nice, nice. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having Uh, me. Thank you for clearing up some stuff that we have questions about as well, like the Influencer Pro and just I had no idea that you commissioned out all the uh, the art for the uh, yeah. the web comics which are great yeah. to watch them. they're still on there as well so yeah they are it's lovely to have them there yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you for coming up thank you Smashing. Beach okay. signing out bye everyone there's a load of names coming up somewhere oh hit like and subscribe YouTubers <laughs> <laughs>